Summon Sign is brought to you by you. If you want to learn how to support our show, go to patreon.com slash laststandmedia. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 10 of Summon Science, Last Stand Media's weekly in-depth game discussion podcast. I am your host, as always, Brad Ellis. And joining me this week is Dustin Furman. Hello, Brad. It's good to be with you. I feel like uh, with Helldivers, we were seeing each other almost every night. And now Rebirth has kind of disrupted that. So I haven't talked to you in man, like four days, maybe other than a few discord messages. So it's nice to be reunited here under the weeb banner once again. (laughs) And uh, excited to not to steal your thunder with the introduction, but I'm excited to be here with cog new, new mix up. It's kind of like constellation, of course, where we're having the different permutations, but being gaming focused, I don't get to talk video games with cog very often. That is true. That is true. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Lord Cognito in the realm is always good to have you back, Ooh, dude. Been summoned to the summon yes, sign. Let's right. go talk about it. Yeah, man, it's a good mix. Good mix. I, I like that we I could actually weave out on this one with you guys, which is fun. And we got a lot of stuff to talk about. But good That's to right. be here, man. A lot of games, man. Yeah, uh, Dustin, I like this show a lot. And I mm-hmm. do try to do this. I try to put people, guests who haven't been together yet or are oh, as yeah. often. Yeah, well, and that's the thing is that, I mean, you and I both see all the feedback for everything and everyone's like, well, when you what about this person with this person, this person with this one? It's like we're we're trying to do that. I mean, mainly, Brad, you're trying to do that. I yeah. I have little input on who's on what, but I think it's would you say it's always serving the discussion in the games first? And yes, foremost it is over right. everything else. Yes. Like, what's going to be the best show? Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. That's why I had you on because I know you're big into Final Fantasy VII and obviously Cog too. Yeah. And uh, Maddie and Gene, of course, have uh, finished the game, so I don't want them on quite yet. Yeah. Because we're still going through hours. it. <laughs> we don't want to know anything else. We're staying away from that. We'll get them on though in the future. 100%. Brad, I think when we were discussing this at one point, you're like, I don't want to hear a just you wait. Like, yeah, it, not, I, none I of that. Hear, no, I don't want to hear any of that. I'm with you. I'm with None you. of this. Mm-hmm. I agree. Because yeah, I don't want to know any single thing. Oh, wait, just wait for this. Yeah, I don't want to <laughs> just keep playing. Like, no, I don't want yeah. any of that. No, 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 no. I'm we're not very about protective. That. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same like you with that. I'm very protective of this. Yeah, we're in week one. All right, so mm-hmm. we're gonna keep it pretty mellow. Uh, before we get into the show, though. Please check us out on patreon.com slash last day mini if you'd like to support us. Uh, Five dollars a month gets you early access and ad free versions of this show as well as sacred symbols, defining Duke, punching up, all that good stuff. So please check us out over there. We'd greatly appreciate it. If you're watching the video or listening, give us a nice, uh, nice rating. If you're enjoying the show, a thumbs up, a like, leave a nice comment or whatever comment, some weird sexual comment, if you will, because I see that a lot on this show now. <laughs> this is yeah. the sex show. Ah, the, the, the summon is out. Yeah, the summon summon is, yeah. I don't the know who started out. that. I feel like you started that almost, Dustin, or some other yeah. degenerate did. But it just I got to be careful, man. though, because I, uh, I think I put this in the staff chat that I started saying Steli when we first started Constellation which I like, I'm cool with, but it gave birth to people commenting peanut butter steli time. And I hate that. <laughs> I feel like I'm like Oppenheimer at the end of the movie when he like realizes what he's done, you know, and I can't st- And here's the thing, because I'm saying it, it's only going to increase. So I'm, I'm asking yes. for it at this point, but yes, but for now, the summon us, he stays. The summon us, yeah. Dude, uh, I watched Oppenheimer last week for the first time. Dude. Dude, really good movie. Really enjoyed yeah, it. it. Yeah, really good. Yeah, a lot of good movies right now. Dune Part Two is out. Yeah, I need to see and that. I'm, I'm annoyed. I really want to go, but I, I annoy myself sometimes because I really I feel like I have to see it in IMAX, and Ooh. I will not lower my standards for this. So the IMAX last weekend, I didn't get tickets. Basically sold out. Next weekend. So full, I could get tickets, but they would be on like you know far side or the very yeah. front. Yeah. So I'm just gonna have to wait 
right now for Dune mm. Part Two. But I'm seeing like the memes are already starting, and people are I'm like, "No, please, just hold off." It's rough, Which, man. Brad, I think you can see it in 70 millimeter IMAX, probably. Uh, yeah, where Ooh. you're at, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, dude. we got like one of the best spectrums in the world nice. where I'm at. So I definitely take advantage of it when I can. I saw, mm-hmm. dude, I saw the Hobbit trilogy, 48 frames there, Dustin. Damn. All Yo, three. The- <laughs> I saw the first one in 48 frames and I walked out of the theater and I thought that was, the, was specifically as part of the part of the fr- frame rate. I was like, that was not good. That yeah. was, uh, I was curious because I'm always curious in new kind of film technology and stuff. Not yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, me being an idiot, I thought, well, maybe the second one will be better in 48 frames. No, no, no. Uh, so oh. I finally learned by the third one, which by that point I was so disinterested in the <laughs> entire franchise. But man, you brought up the show now with a downer talking about the Hobbit. <laughs> the Hobbit. OK, hear me on the Hobbit, right? I don't think it. it's amazing. I think no. it's worse than Lord of the Rings. A hundred percent. I think the first movie is pretty fun. I have fun with it. Second one has parts I like too. Third one is just pretty boring. I would say it's just kind of boring, dude. It's too long, especially sure. the extended cuts, which of course, oh, yeah, gotta watch extended cuts. Yeah, of course. Of course. We, have you seen the clip? There's a clip from one of the behind the scenes that shows like he, Peter Jackson is just sitting on the set by himself, his like hands in his head. <laughs> yeah, and he's dude. clearly. And there's a couple of points where he sandbagged the movie just because he wasn't really supposed to be the director. He kind of, it was supposed to be Del Toro. And then basically they, he, they waited too long and he was basically told like, either you're going to do this, or we're going to find someone else. So he Ooh. wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't have that five years of pre-production, like right. Lord of the Rings, but I know I want, I want the Peter Jackson cut of, of the Hobbit. And people, when they think of the, the, you know, the Snyder cut, make it happen. That's like six hours long or whatever. No, I want the Peter Jackson cut. That's, Three hours, take all three movies, condense them down, get rid of the weird like young Legolas stuff in there. None of that. The weird <laughs> GoPro shots in the river. Cut that. Cut all of that. Yeah, it's weird. Do. It's definitely weird. Yeah, I forgot about the GoPro shots. Yeah, it's it gets so fucking obvious. What were you thinking? <laughs> Those GoPro <laughs> shots, dude. I don't know. I don't. I don't <laughs> understand. It's like someone snuck it in or something. It feels like. Yeah. The thing about Legolas is, yeah, he's not in the books. But that is his dad, so it would make sense for him to be there, I guess. But right. it's not offensive to me. But I would prefer if he was not there, just to keep it pure as possible. Keep the consistency. I got you. And yeah. there's the uh, there's the dwarf elf romance thing. Yeah, too, I hate right? that, dude. Yeah. I hate that. That was that, pretty, pretty bad. I think that sucks ass, dude. That's really, that's such a bummer, dude. <laughs> when I think about that shit, it's like, what's happening here? Why are we doing this? <laughs> I think I, I've reawakened your bad memories. I'm hopefully, hopefully, uh, I don't, maybe those movies at some point deserve a, a reexamination, you know, sure. I, that happens every few years with movies. Yeah. Dude, that's like with Dune. There's been a lot of talk about Blade Runner 2049 right now. Yeah. Yeah. Cause apparently the director said something like, he's like, I regret touching someone else's universe it's like dude oh. what the fuck are you talking about 2049 i think better than the I original love 2049 Runner. yeah i loved that movie when i saw it yeah movie rules yeah man if anyone hasn't seen it fuck dude i also saw avatar way of water 48 frames dustin oh, wow <laughs> now you want to get real weird dude because some of it yeah. was in 24 frames then mm-hmm. it would go to 48 then back to 24 frames I know it was I also jarring. saw it like that. Yeah, it was jarring. It's James Cameron. The 48 <sighs> frames actually felt like kind of worked for that movie because it's so CG, so CG and so fantastical, we'll say so unlike mm-hmm. our own world. Mm-hmm. But the cutting back and forth, it it felt like I was playing a game that would like <laughs> cut scenes would be 30 with frames yeah, with bad <laughs> or, or just like all over the place. I was like, what are you James Cameron, dude? What is he? What is he doing? James Cameron, interesting. Going underwater and his submarines and shit. I don't know. Just doing something like that. One final thing about The Hobbit. Question for both of you. Sure. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, Martin Freeman as Bilbo, one of the goats. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? He's up there. He's up there. I mean... You seem very strongly about that. <laughs> I think he's so good as Bilbo. I think he is like the perfect casting for Bilbo Baggins. I can't good. see anyone I, else being him. 
good. I just, I mean, it, of course, a memorable, a memorable performance. But like, I don't know. I, I wouldn't consider him like iconic in that sense. I'm not saying that no one could do it, but yes. And when I when I think of him, yeah, I think Bilbo for for sure. But I'm curious, that's the way you're at with that. Like, mm. do you feel like no <laughs> one else could play that role? Like, you feel like this is synonymous? It was it was iconic. In the moment when they were coming out, I did feel like perfect casting. And I think overall, if, if, if there is this reexamination of The Hobbit at some point, I think that that will be remain true. Can mm. anyone else play him? I'm not sure about that. I need to think on that. But I remember specifically what was cool was uh, Benedict Cumberbatch being yes, smog. smog. So you had mm-hmm. the Sherlock. Yeah, that reunion. was a nice. Yeah. So that was, was pretty cool. He was really good at Smog. Yeah. Man, that was cool in the second movie. But yeah. yeah. Hits and misses in those movies for sure. Absolutely. Peaks and valleys. Yeah, Big piece sure. of valleys. Anyways, whatever. Welcome to Summit Side. We're talking about video games here. And sometimes, I guess, just whatever random stuff. We Like these, we got some world questions. This is from Citrus Brittle Crisps. <laughs> hey, brothers. I'd like to extend... Oh, this... Oh, Dustin? Yeah. We got another one. We We got one. one. We got another one. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. We got him. Hey, brothers, I'd like to extend a massive shout out to Brad for introducing me to the world of From Software Games. The moment I tuned into the inaugural episode of Summon Sign, where Brad challenged Colin's hesitation towards these games due to their notorious difficulty, emphasizing the need for patience and proper technique, it sparked a realization about my own approach to gaming. Despite previously shying away from their titles because of their challenging nature, the the, the constant praise from both you and Dustin over the years finally convinced me to take the plunge. I didn't just enjoy playing Elden Ring. I achieved the Platinum Trophy. What an incredible journey or adventure it was. I thoroughly enjoyed every moment with a little help from some guides and YouTube videos, of course. Sending a heartfelt thank you and lots of love from Okinawa. Oh, okay. We got so. one back in the From Software Fold. You're in the cult now. You're never leaving. That's just the way it is now. <laughs> it's, it's such a relatable experience because I I had the same thing happen to me just much earlier where I tried playing Demon Souls. This I thought this shit sucks. I'm out. <laughs> tried playing Dark Souls. Better, but I still, still I didn't get it. Tried Dark Souls 2. Also didn't get it, which I in hindsight yeah. now I, you know, that's okay. Dark Souls 2. Yeah. Eh. But then it wasn't until Bloodborne that Ooh. it clicks where you're like, oh, I can't play this. I can't just run up to enemies and expect to just slash around and be fine. And don't get me wrong. I love games like that. But it does. There is this uh, come to Jesus moment with from software games for many players that you're like, oh, this. I just. It is. They are hard games. Anyone who says they're not is lying, mm-hmm. but it takes a re a readjustment of how you play it just it, you can't play it you have to play it the way they want you to play it which mm-hmm. may be off putting to some people but yeah i'm happy to hear we got another one brad and uh just just you got you're eating well you got so much to go back to so much yeah, to look so forward much. to mm-hmm. lots so of lots of content congrats yeah i always when i hear people say like oh it's so hard or whatever it's people that have played like three thousand hours or who use meta builds they found off youtube it's like come on dude no wonder it's not hard for you then (laughs) i i've always made the argument that the the hardest from software game is sekiro because it is the most limiting in your approach you can't use a cheese build there's yeah, there's no cheese build. There are certain bosses you could cheese before they patched it, but that mm-hmm. was the extent of it. And it's very clear, like, if you want to play this game, you gotta learn to block. Mm-hmm. If you don't learn to block, you will not win. Period. And uh That's it's right. an amazing game for that reason, where I kind of like that approach. It's very bold for a developer to be like, no, mm-hmm. there are very few options. We design this game this way and you will play it that way. And there's no easy mode. So yeah. Chad Miyazaki move. That's right. Yeah, you gotta yeah. respect it. You gotta respect. It. I think that's why, even though I am not the Souls guy, I do respect the fact that they are unapologetic with their game design. You know, they, this is how it's to be played, and I like that. I like the fact that there's no compromises with it. Like, and that challenge, I I get it. Like that whole once you conquer these 
challenges in the, in the style of gameplay, it you see the rewarding aspect of it and then the addiction starts. So I completely get it. I just don't want to be angry in my life. (laughs) (laughs) That's fair enough, Cog. Uh, What, what games have you played from them, Cog? I have no idea. I just know you're not too big into them. Yeah, obviously. I mean, what you call a bloodborne was one. Um, Mm -hmm. Elden Ring was the big one. They were like, Cog, you got to give this one a shot. And the fact that the format changed and I have to admit, you know, I did really enjoy it. They stood there teasing me. They wanted me to stream it. And what's your man? And should you come out the cave though? They was like, get him, Cog. (laughs) I realized, okay, this is literally a test and I'm not ready for this (laughs) this time. You know, but they, they trolled me for an hour with that guy, the golden guy on the horseback kind of thing. But I, I get it. I could, I, my issues just have been, um, as a guy that when they implemented the the co op aspect of it, and I'm a big co op guy, I just hated the implementation. Like, get a bloody finger and start sure, up in yeah. there and do all this mm-hmm. on a Tuesday, <laughs> and then you can get together. That part annoyed me, but the base mechanics of the game, I completely get the addition. The open world aspect of it is super cool, and it, it just. It, it it was something that it seemed simple, but it, what the genre needed. And it's cool to see how they were surprised how much people really took to it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it was cool, man. I'm a salute to the, the you souls guys. You guys, you guys are my heroes. Oh, younger Cog back in the day. Maybe. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All the time, I'm like, bro, once two or three, like strong defeats. And I'm like, oh, I'm ready to throw this controller against the screen. <laughs> but I understand the satisfaction of the conquer and what I consider the dance of like yeah. really getting the techniques down and beating these bosses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if the games are not for you, I do mm-hmm. like that. You at least appreciate the aspects of them. So that's nice to hear. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Meatball wrote in. All right, here we go. What's up? You quivering and with anticipation. Some of Oh boy. Uh, sorry about that one. Yeah, I'll I'll take the I'll take the fall. On that. <laughs> oh, all right. Warm up question: You're all scheduled to be executed tomorrow due to your worst slash hottest video game take. What's your take, and what do you choose as your last meal? <sighs> Ooh, that's good. All right. So I don't know if this is a hot take anymore, but man, I used to talk shit on Borderlands. Ooh. Big time shit on Borderlands. Ooh. Not funny. Meme lands. That was all their humor. Not even that great gameplay at the time. But I remember when Borderlands was hot, dude. Everyone loved Borderlands. I was the one grumpy guy, be like, no, I was the old man, be like, no, this sucks, kind of thing. I don't even know if that's that hot of a take, though, anymore, you know? Yeah. I feel like people don't care about, I mean, people still like Borderlands, but it's not as prevalent as it used to be i'd say especially now when you got like a movie coming out that people are just like kind of mixed on i don't know i feel like i wouldn't get killed for that people just be like whatever mm. dude i remember when borderlands one came out it was so big because i yeah i want to say i was in high school what was that 2010 yeah 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 so, and i remember finally getting the game uh not at launch i think i either got it for christmas or shortly after and all the people that were playing and telling me to play it were either too high level or not playing anymore. So I was stuck by myself and I played some of it and I played some of two, but I got to agree. I don't think they're very, very funny, uh, very funny games. And here's the other thing, Cog, maybe you can relate mm-hmm. to this is that when I want to play a game like that now, like a looter shooter, you know, you shoot something and numbers pop up. I, I just want to play destiny. I would way rather just put time into destiny than play any other game like that and maybe that's not borderlands fault but that at least it feels like i'm working towards a character that i've had for almost a decade now well, so which it is definitely the way that the gunplay feels and everything it borderlands the og we get it you know and i i'm kind of with you exactly on this part like i understand why people like it but there's a part of me that's like it's a little overrated and some of the jokes really don't hit the most fun i've had with it was um actually what it, it was a non member of the main core series, which was Tales of the Borderlands, like a Telltale oh, game. Oh, right, yeah. And that was actually hilarious to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, as far as like the main, yeah, the main game, don't get me wrong, I, I understand what it does for the looter shooter. I'm co- completely with Dustin. There's nothing that feels better than Destiny's gunplay from a Bungie standpoint right. and the way they incorporated it. That, to me, is always going to be what I always go back. That's home to me. You know. Yeah. Of, so, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Dustin, you got one. Do you know what my hottest take already is, Brad? 
the one I get uh, attacked for the most? Uh, no. My hot take is Metroid Prime. More like Midroid Prime. Oh yeah, boo this man. Ooh. Not good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I forgot go. about that. <laughs> let's go. Boo this man. Uh, the last thing in Discord would like to say that I was filtered by Metroid Prime, but that's not true. I beat the game. Yeah. I beat it out of spite of, at about two thirds oh, in. Oh, that's high I don't energy. Even, <laughs> I don't even want to play this game anymore. And the reason why is just that there, there's good backtracking and there's bad backtracking in mm-hmm. games. And Metroid Prime is filled with bad, boring backtracking uh, with a map system and level layout that is super confusing and annoying. <laughs> and it's just a, a boring game through Damn. and through. I don't maybe Metroid Prime two and three are better. And I'm 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 open ended. I'm totally open to Metroid Prime four. I'll probably buy it day one. Regardless, I'm open yeah. to it. But and that remaster, excellent quality in terms of what yep. they did visually. The performance, amazing port on the Nintendo Switch, but it doesn't make up for the fact that it's just simply not a very good video game. <laughs> That's a good one, dude. Yeah, you're getting killed. But now I got to figure out, you know, they're, they're taking me away for this take. They're putting me in jail. They're, they're warming up the electric chair. Last meal? Which Papa going? John's for you. Papa jo- oh, yeah. <laughs> dude, the Papa Real John's bad. takes on Twitter are going hard yeah. right now. Yeah. Papa John's. I feel like... Man, there's I mean, I love pizza. Maybe it's like a combo with pizza. My gut right now is telling me wings like I got to have wings Ooh. and pizza. Yeah, wings and a beer. Is good. That's like, good. That might be. But the wings can't be from Papa John's, though. Right. Those no, Papa no, no, John's no. wings trash. Don't ever touch those. They got to be, <laughs> you know, from some shitty Other. bar here in Western PA. Oh, that that's good. Does the wing night. You go on the touch tunes. They're playing Creed for three hours straight. That's where you got to get the wings. That's the spot. That's the spot. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> no, no. No, I'll jump in. Um, worse, I actually think one of my worst takes was recently that I, I got killed for was um, the latest Modern Warfare. Was it Modern Warfare 3? Yeah. Oh, yeah I remember Bro, that. I love the game. I'm sitting there like, <laughs> this is like, popcorn movie to me. This is like me watching. I don't know if you guys ever watched the show or with Kiefer Sutherland back in the day called 24. Yeah. And um, oh, yeah, like, bro, it, it's just like one of these over the top summer blockbuster kind of films. And I just thought certain set pieces were, were kind of cool. You know what I'm saying? I thought like, you know, the, the, the stadium being taken over by rogue agents, you couldn't shoot the civilians. And I mind you, I haven't played Call of Duty, a main one in a long time. But I understand the hardcore is like, oh, this just you reuse assets. I'm telling you, you if you want a good one, you should have been playing, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, this is not the worst game. Like some people say like it was the worst game they've ever played. Like it was like terrible. And I'm just like, nah, I can't do this. I was, I was loving the, the antagonist. I, I was loving the story. And it's somebody connects to um past uh Call of Duty Bay characters. So that was my worst take that they did not like. So I was like, right, I'm dying with this one. Cause I, I looked at the letter. It got me back into Call of Duty now. <laughs> so I'll be with that one. And then as far as the meal, it's weird because if we if it's the last meal, I'm assuming. The execution is about to go down, so you can't right. take me to a, a restaurant or something like that I want to do. But I would say I got this weird affinity for Boston Market. Boston Whoa, Market. Okay. Whoa, dude. Like, I, it's bad because now in um, New York and Jersey, I don't know, there's something going on with Boston Markets are getting closed down by me. Oh, no. And I went, like, driving to different locations to see if it was just isolated to one, the one that I, that I go to regularly that got closed down. Nah, bro. So I, I'm going through it. So I would say, yeah, like a little bit. You know, quarter chicken, white, mm-hmm. keep it basic, you know, and a little, little sweet potato, maybe some mac and cheese. Um, yeah, I like I like Boston Market. I'm, I'm a simple man. Just get some yeah, Boston yeah, Market. Dude. Meat potatoes, I'm good, you know? I've heard Holly, I've never been to Boston Market, but Holly tells me growing up that her mom would take her there. And there's not one close anymore because, like you said, they're closing down. She always talked about the macaroni and cheese at Boston yeah, Market being oh, yeah. just OP. Quality. Really OP, very mm. overpowered, and and sweet potato is also good. Sandwiches are good. It's like they just do cl- basic American food well. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's not, it's nothing like over the top. It's just you know what? This is a good decent meal. It's a nice taste to it. So yeah, Boston Market man, you got to try it once. Time. Hopefully they still exist at this point. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Brad. I, I don't think two, we got your meal. I, yeah, your oh meal? my meal hold on. I got two more takes. Let's see. If oh, two more are, takes. If you agree okay. with these ones or if they're offensive. Sure. 
Um, Kingdom Hearts has a good story. All of them. All of them. Ooh. Deal with it. All I almost them. was with you. All of them. Well, <laughs> except, you said okay, all of them. I, I, overall, good story. Okay. Overall, good story. I sell me on this one. <laughs> overall. Mm. Long lasting characters. Dude, it's like Yakuza vibes. Uh, Cog, <laughs> long storylines, characters. Sora is the Kiryu Kazuma of the universe. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Majima is Riku, I okay. guess. But long okay. going, multiple characters, multiple protagonists throughout. Long narrative going through. And guess what? If you don't play the other games, you're fucked. And I love that about those games. You're uh, in on the ground yeah. floor, you're out. Mm. Too bad. You better catch you. up. I, I love that you. shit. I got you. I got you. Standing on business. I got you. <laughs> I got to ask the, the counterpoint for this. You guys play those games. <laughs> I got to ask Dustin <laughs> for the counterpoint. Mm. It's just, I'm too old. I'm like, I feel like the creepy dude at the playground. Like, I shouldn't be playing those, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a watch list if you play those. Yeah, like, I'm on a watch list. I'm on a neighborhood. He can't yeah. get that guy away from that. But Dustin, like, what's your thoughts on it? Like, do you agree with him? Do you, where, where are you at? Kingdom Let's Hearts. See I, I love hearing Kingdom Hearts lore of people who really love the franchise and the pushback. I think it's funny. Okay. Brad brings up some very good points. I am a big fan of legacy overall, and especially in games where you're dealing with characters that have been with you for a very long time, seeing their journey, uh, long running rivalries, also very good thing with kingdom hearts is the amount of chaos interjected into the story right at number two well really starting with chain of memories actually yes. so starting right after the first release you get into uh nobodies you get mm-hmm. into some body snatching scenarios and it could be argued hey that, that was in the first game body snatching was in the first that's game. true that's true the thing losing memories, you can do that. You could make an argument that it injects all this chaos. And then if you if you get out like a whiteboard and organize everything like you look like Charlie Day, like mm-hmm. with the chaos in the background, mm-hmm. it does mostly make sense uh, in the context of things. But. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> if I can. Is it a good story? OK. Is it a so that's the, the is yes. it's a good story? Yes, I'm gonna say yes. It is a good story. Okay. I don't know if I'm gonna say it's well written. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, I guess as I'm about to be killed, what am I gonna eat? I don't, dude. Cliche answer, I guess, but it's just real basic and close to home for me. I'm just gonna have fucking in and out, dude. In and oh out. hell yeah! Final mm-hmm. go. All right, all right. If nothing fancy, but just nice burger fry, soda. Then you kill me. Take me yeah. out, dude. Roll. In and out is great when you don't have a bitch in your ear telling you five five guys is better. You know? know that's the problem. Anytime you mention In and Out, someone's always like, "Oh, five guys, Shake Shack better." It's like, dude. Yeah. If I can, if I want to buy like a fifteen dollar burger, I'll go to fucking Five Guys. All right. <laughs> five Guys is good. I won't deny it. But mm-hmm. good lord, is it expensive? Like, yeah, it get, is, it like is. calm down, five guys. Like, what do you get off charging that much for a burger, man? What well, do you yeah. think? Who do you think you are? We're <laughs> the problem, Brad, because I will still go to five guys despite that barely worth it price, you know? But I do it so much less. Do you mm. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, I go to five guys like once every three months, maybe. Yeah, it's been a minute for me. Yeah, and uh, well, like how how close is your in and out? Like, can you pretty get close? There pretty quick? There's two pretty close to me. Yeah. Too convenient, dude. They're relatively cheap too for what they give you. It's like, man, I think that a lot of the the fighting about in and out comes in is that there's some people that will argue that it is the best burger oh, joint. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. no, 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 and especially for us here on the East Coast, it's some getting something different. I mean, that speaks for a lot. Uh, when right. you're out there. So it's like, yeah, I want to get in and out as many times as I possibly can <laughs> when I'm out yeah, west. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah, take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm not saying it's like the best burger on the planet or anything like that. I just think it's really good for the price. And now, how convenient it is. Brad, everyone knows about the the quote unquote secret menu that's not really a secret. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Have you ever experimented? I know you can just add like more burgers yes. to the to the stack. My friend Brandon got a four like a four stack once mm-hmm. and like fries animal style. He he was suffering later. That oh, yeah. was like, what have I done? Uh, but, oh, you ready for me to one up that big time? Yeah, One of my friends, got? his name's Armin. Okay. That's he a powerful got name. a 12 by 12. <laughs> hey, yo. 12 patties. That's why I don't think he finished it, but he put in hell of an effort. I think he threw up patties. After. I mean, but. you'd have to 12 <laughs> patties. I mean, I'm trying to think realistically. I probably if I was real hungry and wanted to hate myself later, I could maybe do six and be Ooh. very uncomfortable. Good. I don't think I could do that. I think I could do four max Four. I just because mm. like I got to get fries too, you know? Yeah, you got to fill that out. Yeah, you got to yeah. get the fries and the shake, dude. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is from Jared R. Hey, boys, a little more question for you. I'm going to list three RPGs that are considered some of the best of all time. You have to decide which one is going to get a full remake treatment, like FF7 Remake, which is going to get an HD 2D upscale, and which one will never be touched or remain the way it is forever. I'd like to hear your reasoning for your choices. Okay, so our choices are Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VI, and Earthbound. Hmm. All right, I I can go ahead. All right, let's go. Go for it, Brad. So... I'm playing this from two ways. One is for the people. Mm-hmm. One is for me. Okay. Okay. This is for the people. For Final the people. Fantasy VI will get the full HD, the the big the big treatment, the seven remake mm-hmm. treatment. Okay. Chrono Trigger would get the HD 2D, and Earthbound would be left the same. Me, yes. me. If this is me, this is Chrono Trigger gets the FF7 remake treatment. Six is HD 2D, Earthbound the same. Mm, this you know good. what? Actually, scratch that. Earthbound right. HD 2D, six the same. Oh, six. Oh. Okay. I think six as it is already is fantastic mm. and a marvel. I don't look at six and I'm like, it needs HD 2D. I don't think right. it does. If it got it, cool. But I think six as it is, especially with the pixel remasters, is just fantastic. Mm, I like that. Like yeah. Chrono Trigger. I was always in the Chrono Trigger camp more than six. Gotcha. I am torn because I can see like some of my best friends are like Chrono Trigger diehards. And they're right. like, bro, this deserves it. And then they had like a PC port that wasn't that good. Yes, they did. <laughs> PC version. Yeah. And it's just like, man. And, and then. You know, being the seven fanboy that I am, I have to I have to recognize six is greatness. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I feel bad for them that they haven't gotten the full treatment, but I do <laughs> like to tease them because I'm, I'm, I'm. It's like an ongoing war that I have. With them. Mm-hmm. Um, mm, this is tough. Everybody, let's just say I, I say remains the same for me. Um, gun in my head, I'm gonna say six. Six needs it. Six D's, six sure. D's. They, 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 they've been suffering a while. And I know Corn Trigger fans are bad, but six D's. Six it. makes yeah. the most sense, probably, with how long that game is and how much you can yeah. flesh it out. And yeah. how many characters I've, there are and everything. Like, Chrono yeah. Trigger is a very smaller, much smaller scale, Small much scale. tighter game. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would say six and, you know, give, let's give Kefka some love. Yeah. Kefka's mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm thinking mainly just because we're, I mean, we're about to talk about Rebirth. I think about that. Square Enix quality that they'll be able to bring, which Chrono Trigger 2, I know, is same same deal. But Final Fantasy 6, that seems like prime. It's it uh-huh. so many people loving it. And I'm thinking about Chrono Trigger just being, you know, it's a Toriyama, of course, art style, lending to that 2D HD style. Earthbound. I guess this could have gone, gone in the hot take section, too, because I've not finished Earthbound as many people have it that claim to love it, but I'm not claiming to be the biggest (laughs) Earthbound fan ever. Right. Earthbound, I... Is it really worthy of being considered one of the greatest RPGs of all time? I I don't know. Don't get me wrong. I think Earthbound's super cool. My wife, Holly, she's actually played it and beaten it. We have uh, a Mr. Saturn plush in our living room. We've got a cross-stitch thing that she made of Mr. Saturn in our living room. Mr. Saturn is hideous. 
Dude, he's <laughs> dude. I love Why Mr. Is that Saturn. guy sitting in your living room, <laughs> that freak, dude? Dude, don't diss Mr. Saturn. Okay, Mr. Saturn. He, <laughs> All right, I'll stand down on that. The the cross stitch uh, is him saying, "Drink coffee before go." Uh, uh, that's so, why I like it. Yeah, so of course we have to have that. But so I I have a huge amount of respect for Earthbound. But when you actually sit down to play it outside of the world, the characters and all of that, mm-hmm. I just don't know if it's that good. Um, and would you now mean? a game is much more than just its gameplay, of course. <laughs> but when we're talking what games I want to see, and maybe a remake would be able to fix that uh, yeah. about Earthbound. But yeah, yeah, I think Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI. Uh, deserve much more at this point now earthbound fans there are they're they're used to suffering yes, they're already that's all they, they just do. got mother three japan only their their suffering can continue they're used to it yeah but it's over for them it's over for them so <laughs> <laughs> i respect it i respect it <laughs> do you guys think chrono trigger i think colin has said this on sacred but he always said that that's the that's square enix's like they've got it in it like the design dock in a glass box and it's like has a hammer it's like break in case of emergency, if they're really hurting, all I got to do is tap that chrono trigger button and and print some cash pretty yeah. quick. They also got to go through Toei Animations, which yeah. is a huge oh, part of it. That's right. That's a huge that. block. Yes. But uh, yeah, Damn. I mean, I'm sure they could work out a deal, but yes. Oh, boy. Yeah. Earthbound with Chrono Trigger and six. I don't know, man. I haven't played Earthbound, but everyone, everyone I hear talk about it is kind of like you, Dustin. Cool mm-hmm. world, cool setting, cool characters, cool premise, gameplay, eh, whatever. Yeah. But I'm like looking at Chrono Trigger. I'm like, yo, OK, one of the best RPGs ever made. Final Fantasy VI, one of the best RPGs ever made. And you got Earthbound. All right. <laughs> It's just sitting there. All right. Yeah, just sitting there. Like one does not belong here, in my opinion. But that's all right. I know people love it, but it's over. You're never getting Mother 3. No. You got to do the the fan translations. Sorry. All right. Enough down on uh, (laughs) poor Earthbound. (laughs) (laughs) Let's talk about Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. Boys, it is here. It has happened. We've been playing it. It's out in the wild. It's so I'm having such a goddamn good time playing this game, guys. I feel so happy playing it. It reminds me when I play Elden Ring, when I play like Tears of the Kingdom. I am just so sucked into this world. Nothing matters. I don't hear anything else except the video game as I'm playing it. That's all that matters to me when I'm playing. I'm sitting here thinking about like, oh, I want to play Rebirth later. Like, that's what I'm thinking about as we're here. I'm sure both of you are like that, too. Like, Mm -hmm. we got to keep going. Before we get into like nitty gritty aspects of it, I guess. Let's hear some overall just impressions about it. Cog, let's start with you, man. I know you're a big FF7 fan. That's why I asked you to be on here. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Love. Yeah, man. Look, I probably got the least hours of you guys because I started late. This has been a crazy week. So I'm about 20 hours in, a couple chapters in. But look, as a person who's been following this series for a long time, you know, we we have to admit what they're attempting is kind of unprecedented, you know, in, mm-hmm. in the space. So my thing is now, like, how do we get, how do we handle this sequel? How do we start this off? And I thought it was cool, you know, very festive. I, I, I like the energy in the town and stuff like that. But I guess my main concern was like, the open world because right. I'm used to them in that hub, you know, world kind of thing. And how's that going to translate? And it's like you said, man, like I didn't realize how much I would love it. Like they really, really did a good job. It just from the sense of exploration and while you're on your path. OK, what is this structure? Let me go see what what's going on here kind of thing. But um, yeah, I think I think right now they've nailed it. Um, All right, let's get out of the way, you know. Chocobos are adorable. Hell yeah. <laughs> they're, they're absolutely adorable. They're, they're, they're yeah. cool. Um, I think just from, I just want to start also on, I know we're probably going to get into a technical question too. Yeah, keep but going, yeah. surprisingly, I was thought, I thought graph, graphical bone was going to be, um, you know, the way to go and that performance was not. But for me, it actually runs, I'm running on this uh, uh, OLED with, I get with VRR. I don't know if that helps, 
But performance mode is looking really fantastic for me. <laughs> I was like, mm-hmm. it's smooth. It's nice. I was like, I don't mm-hmm. see. And again, I'm not the frame counter guy. So maybe there are some dips that I'm not seeing. But I'm just like, wow, this really performs well to me. And I know they're going to patch the game. But let's just, you know, that the combat feels absolutely fantastic. I'm a huge Red 13 fan. Yeah. He's re- ridiculous yeah he's good <laughs> that vengeance mode hold the button and then you know you kind of take the the aoe the damage and then you just unleash i've been having a ball Aerith feels a little op i ain't gonna lie but it's all good <laughs> <laughs> got my little wards i'm doing my little you know thing with that um the combat is just it's great it's risk reward and I, I love the synergy system right now so i would say right now absolutely having a ball with it i do have one minor rant i have to mm-hmm. get off though yeah. Okay, this is my rant. Now, mind you, it was limited week, right? I'm like, okay, I got like a f- f- one night. I only had like three or four hours. I'm like, I can't wait. Now, mind you, Brad, we were talking about, you know, we did the demo. We did ne- ne- Nibelheim. We, you mm-hmm. know, got the Sephiroth story. All right, cool. We're ready to start the game. You told me that when I beat this demo, mm-hmm. I'm going to start at chapter two. That's how I interpret it. That's how I <laughs> so, interpret it. <laughs> yeah, so I get there, right? And it's like, yeah, get ready to go into the town again and talk with everyone about And I'm like, wait, 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 I did this. So I mm-hmm. had a panic attack. So I said, okay, you know what? Something happened with the demo. Let me go back to the demo. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I went back to the demo. And the funny thing is the demo didn't complete. It had me now walking in on Sephiroth murdering everybody yeah. so i'm like okay well maybe i do that it completes and then it's going to transfer over and i load my save no i'm having a heart attack I, that night only had like three hours to play oh, and i'm no. like i gotta do this whole thing over oh no like it was stressing me so what ends up happening is i finally conceded i'm like all right i just gotta have to play it they make you go all through the town, all through the city, back, get to the mountain part, and then tell you, oh, mm-hmm. by the way, now you can skip. <laughs> yeah. Like, square. Y'all got to come to the front of the congregation on how to transfer <laughs> data into the next part. Other than that, that was my only major. Be- and um, I would say uh, the mini game, what is it, uh, Queen's Blood? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very aggressive. They wanted to throw this on me as soon as I start the game. I was like, all right, let me. I don't know if I want to do I want to kind of get into the game, but you're making me play it. But I, I, I have to admit, the addiction, the addiction is there. I get it now. I get control in the board. I get, mm-hmm. I get it now. The point system and stuff like that. That little girl, that, that the woman that was up by the um the waterfall, and she's all in the barricade. She was terrorizing me for a little bit. <laughs> but yeah. other than that, yeah, I got more top level thoughts. But overall, it's Final Fantasy. The Open World Translated is is fantastic. I'm messing with my material. I'm doing my synergies. I'm making my little builds. And the transmutation system I thought was cool too, just kind of making you know your own potions and things like that. But I, I got a lot to go on. But top level, I'm really, really enjoying it so far. Yep. Dustin. Yeah. So I was going into this with very little in that I did not watch the state of play. I watched maybe the... I watched the reveal trailer initially and then the the like kind of re-reveal like a year later or something in the in the, I think it was in the summer one year. So I knew it was open world, but I didn't know to what extent what it was gonna look like. And so it was very exciting diving in. Uh, and I cog, I also had the ex- almost the exact same thing with the save transfer thing because Brad and I were playing Helldivers uh the night before, and he's like, Hey, that you can play that demo now if you want, you can just go right into it. And so then I, I start the real game after playing the demo. And I'm like, damn you, Brad, what have you told me? And then I looked it up. <laughs> and I was like, okay, other people just keep going. Just keep going for a little bit. It'll be okay. Um, but then they make you do, they make you redo the whole part where clouds like crawling. And it's so annoying. I hate mm-hmm. It's like so <laughs> slow. The metal the part you sold for part. The, the part, part where clouds like limping through all the fire and stuff. It's cool the first time, but then doing it again the very next day. Mm-hmm. There's also okay. I I told myself I was only I was going to be positive for a long time before negative because I didn't want to. No, 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 the conversation. Let's get, Let's get it out. This is a big nitpick. There's the no. part where clouds limping. They're like, oh, you got to crawl under this thing, so he can barely walk on one leg, and then he crawls under the thing. His legs totally fine. Yeah, and then you can see. I, I was like, hey Holly, watch this because I knew it was going to happen. He like he's like walking under, and then he like snaps back into leg injury mode, and I thought. <laughs> I know that's such a big nitpick, but man, come on, just keep it just a little. It felt a little weird. 
a weird my favorite okay. part about the fire scene is Dustin. There's a house. There's a guy that comes out of a house that's burning, and he just walks out very casually, <laughs> <laughs> and just like puts his head like down, <laughs> and it's like on burning wood. I'm <laughs> just like, all right, guys. And you're like, yeah, you gotta patch that. <laughs> gotta, gotta patch that. that. Gotta patch that. Overall, though, some high level thoughts are the thing that I love the most about this game is that. And it's kind of hard to quantify exactly or or describe is just there's a feeling of a fun adventure in Mm -hmm. that obviously a lot of serious stuff is going on, um, but I'm really, really feeling like the camaraderie of the team. You're riding around together on the Chocobos. We mentioned those earlier. Chocobos are awesome i love seeing red 13 on the chocobo he looks so so silly so ridiculous it's great yeah there's just this overall sense of fun to it and like it's kind of lighthearted in a lot of ways in terms of the the open world cog you touched on the improvements to battles like how much they added with the different synergy attacks there's now the special moves that do elemental damage which is really cool being able to add that in and so all those improvements like man this is pretty awesome this feels i'm always concerned when i start a game like this that's so anticipated it's like is this how much of a sequel is this going to be in terms of like what are they going to add to the formula because they could have easily really just said okay we're going to take the combat put it in open world um, and kind of change that formatting. But no, they did a lot to the combat as well. I particularly like now when you do a, a roll, like if you do a dodge roll with cloud and then you start attacking, he does these like one piece Zoro style, mm-hmm. like ranged attacks with mm-hmm. the sword that are very, very useful and very fun as well. So yeah, I am impressed overall just uh, in that aspect there are some things that I I don't want to say are, are concerning, but aren't as appealing to me as a player. So I'm only up to chapter three. So we're not going to get into any spoil- big spoilers, of course, but I'm, I'm in the second big open world area. Okay. So I really wanted to get an understanding of what open world events or gameplay in this game was. So I did... Literally everything that you could do in the grasslands. I did all of it. And I. I don't want to say I'm disappointed, but it's very standard open world stuff that you're doing. They're not reinventing the wheel at all. It's like, okay, go to this tower, unlock it, Mm -hmm. go to this thing. You're going to fight a guy. There was one pretty interesting mission uh, that was like a multi-tiered mission in there that was kind of fun. But. I did all those and then I thought, okay, I'm ready to move on to the next story thing. And then I'm immediately presented in another giant section doing all those same activities again. I thought, you know, it's not that I don't want to do these, but I kind of don't right Mm. now. So I don't, I, I felt this conflict where I was thought, well, I got a lot of good gear, a lot of good stats from doing those, but spent i spent the the first two days playing this game just doing all this side stuff and it was cool but i'm ready to do the story but now that i'm in that area i'm like i i don't really want to go hunt around for towers right now like i just i don't know if i'm in the mood for that i will say though in the second area the side quests are much cooler than the first area Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a lot of off the wall, fun and weird things going on in the side quests in the second area. So I like that a lot. But so I, I'm curious. I have no idea how many big open worlds are in this game just from being on media blackout. So I've done some of that stuff. I got to say to Chadley, shut the fuck up. Chadley, <laughs> quit calling me. Quit calling me. Every, about, every time I do so, I'm feeling a new, uh, new <laughs> combat mission. Shut up, what about, dude. What about my... Oh, dude. Yeah, okay, yeah. she's kind of cool, but she I also she's it. on the. I, I knew it. Dustin would like her more immediately. Good you know, anime girl. Yeah. Uh, immediately. <laughs> the, 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 what is it, the cool. high value targets and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. She's still. She's. You know, it doesn't matter. Both of them nagging me too much. Shut up. I don't need you to call me every time. So, um, the last thing I'll say 
uh, just because I don't want to talk too much, is about this the performance mode stuff because that's been a big topic of conversation. And I had a really unique situation with this. Um, for Sacred listeners, you know, I just got a new couch, and the new couch came on Friday. So on Thursday night, we wait, moved. Wait, I need. We have a question about this performance oh, mode. Oh, 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 please. Let's do that. Then we'll get to back to the couch part. Then do it. Okay. The Santani wrote in. Howdy. Question. Does Final Fantasy VII Rebirth run at 60 FPS while in performance mode on the PS5 and does the resolution become egregious while doing so? I ask because I've been seeing people online complaining about how the game looks while in performance mode, yet when I see the videos of it, it looks pretty and very playable. All that said, I am much more of a frame rate snob than I am a resolution snob. Thanks for the hard, so very hard work. Winks to Dustin. Man, what... I'm getting known as this like pervert now. From <laughs> I guess I brought it upon myself. <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, yeah. So the couch thing, and this does relate to the performance mode. I swear. Right. I know Let's get to <laughs> it, it seems Let's like get a stretch. It. So I took the old couch out to my friend's house Thursday night. So we had to move my love seat and I just put it in the middle of the floor <laughs> to play remake. So I was much closer to my TV and I was playing performance mode. I was like, oh, We'll see we'll here, this performance mode, not in terms of its performance, but the resolution, right? pretty soft. And particularly when you get out into the open world, the foliage and stuff, it, it made me very conflicted because I was flipping between graphics and performance. I was like, man, I really don't want to play on the graphics mode because I can't stand the frame rate, but it looks so much better. Mm -hmm. So then when I was back at my normal viewing distance the next day when I got the new couch, I can still tell that it's soft. But because I was further away from the TV, it's like I can do it. This is fine. I I don't love it, but it's cool. Now, the the write in mentions about uh, the like uh, the resolution become egregious. Does it become egregious? I think that really just depends on how far you are from your TV. It could be better. Absolutely. And I think one of the biggest things and I'll leave on this because I've talked too much at this point is that it's going to be jarring if you if you go from playing remake on PS5 and then go directly to playing this game, it is going to be a visual downgrade. Mm -hmm. But the trade off is the open world. But it is jarring where you go from one to the other and you see particularly character models like you see cloud. And you're like, what is going on with his face? Uh, it's that does not look as good as the last game. So it's a bit of a. Thing. But I'm curious what you guys think about the performance mode because that that's been a, a huge huge topic for people. So someone who played Final Fantasy 16 also, I would I huge I prefer this greatly to what Final Fantasy 16 did. Mm. Uh, 16 mm. had a performance mode, but it was not good or consistent at all, except in some of the battles. I will gladly take some softer images, a little blurrier, if the game runs good. And the game does run good. Like I haven't really noticed any drops inside crazy combat encounters. So I will gladly take that any day. Cause I, to me, FPS is much more important to me, especially in a game with such high action. So I'm like, yeah, it's fine. They're going to patch it. I've heard to make it yeah. a little better, which is good, but I, yeah, I'm just happy. It runs good at a frame rate wise. So that's what I've been playing in. Yeah. yeah. Same, same for me. Yeah. It was, I, when I did the switch, I was in town and the thing immediately that bothered me was moving like molasses at 30 right. in the town. And the minute I put 60 and I seen cloud, I seen that busted sword moving from side to side mm -hmm. much fast. I said, I'll deal with any little resolution inconsistency on that part. And yeah, the game still looks good. But to your point, Dustin, I do agree. Like when they zoom up and you see the cloud, you're like, all right, it looks good. But then when you go back and you see, you know, remake, you're like, oh yeah, it was, it was, it was much better. <laughs> it was much better. Mm -hmm. So if you go, yeah, directly from one to the other, you'll notice it. It's just that I've actually been away from remake for a while. So it didn't feel as jarring to me, but yeah, for the, for the action heavy aspect of the combat, I rather that responsiveness, especially, you know, my, mm -hmm. looking at my limit breaks, I'm looking at ATB meters and all that stuff. I want that, you know, precision at speed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will say in, in terms of, I don't know if this happens on graphics mode, but I'm not saying the game is like, oh, it's half baked. It's not done. I mm -hmm. think they may have been cutting. I don't want to say cutting it close. It, this game could use a little more polish. Sure. Have you guys noticed where particularly in cutscenes, 
I've noticed, and if you're indoors, you can really tell. Sometimes it will cut to somebody and the background textures of like a wood wall will mm-hmm. be like popping in and out. It's very, and you know, sometimes games do that and that's fine. It's been particularly distracting in a few moments. I'm like, what, what is going on with the wall back there? <laughs> popping in and out like crazy. But yeah, man, I, uh, it makes me sad just because the PS5 Pro is coming yeah. and this is one of those games like, man, if I wasn't afraid of spoilers and also had any semblance of patient patience in my life, this game will be better on PS5 Pro. Yeah, for sure. It will. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, I'm just happy. Like I said, that at 60 frames, at least consistently, I didn't really expect that because there's going to be open world a seamless open world. So I'm pretty happy about that. But yeah, you can, you can sure you can touch that up a little bit. You got, you got time. It's fine. The most important parts of the game work good. So I'm I'm at least happy about that. The only yeah, goofy absolutely. stuff I've seen is maybe like a, <laughs> like a a party member in the background, like in a cutscene, like run into like furniture and knock it over. <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like Barrett just walked through a yeah. table or something. <laughs> I hope. Like, uh, right. I, I know you said they're they're patching it. I hope. Huh? And I think this is wishful thinking because very few developers do this because it uh, it only works for a very small set of players is that if you have a TV that has 120 Hertz refresh rate, mm-hmm. they could do a 40 FPS mode with on yeah. graphics. That'd be great, man. That would be awesome. I would absolutely love that. But I, I know that's wishful thinking. I, I'm not banking on that, but yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah. Hopefully that'd be awesome if they did that. You know, they work pretty close with Sony, so maybe. I don't know. They treat maybe. this game like a big deal, so maybe they'll patch it like a big deal. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah it'll come. Um, I guess I just kind of want to talk about how impressed I am with things being translated to this new version. Like, obviously, we saw a lot of that in Midgar and stuff like that. And it was really cool seeing Midgar in, on P- like a PS4 version of it. But just seeing how they've handled the open world, because you look at the world map before Final Fantasy VII and it's like <laughs> just cloud and everything's very tiny and him running around on it. But now it's like, no, man, the grasslands is actually a huge space for you to explore. Like you can look over there and see Choco Billy's or Choco Bill's like stable and all that kind of stuff. You look over there, you see Calm with all these airships going around it. All that stuff's been really great. And the towns are expanding in such good ways. Like Calm is so awesome. I love being in Calm. Totally reminds me of a Kingdom Hearts town, uh, Dustin. Same oh, yeah. vibe, big time. Twilight Town, for sure. And just like all the people there, the streams going through with like the boats yeah. and all that stuff. I'm just like, man, the multi levels and all this good stuff. Very dense. like Very, very dense. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people there, a lot of chatting. I love all that stuff. So it's been really nice to see all that kind of get realized. I mean, that's just like every location I'm seeing now. I'm like, oh, I'm seeing it like in this now blown up. It's It's so great. Yeah. Um, I do want to talk about the combat you guys brought up earlier and I think they made honestly just improvements across the whole board compared to remake everything I think they've added has been very good the synergy thing is really good not only because you do sweet team up attacks which is always fun but some of them are extremely useful in combat like one I use for Tifa Tifa can't get to guys in the air as easily as Cloud can like Cloud, you know, if you do the roll and you hold square, he'll go up there and start fighting guys there. Tifa doesn't have that same ability. But if you do the synergy ability, Cloud or Aerith can like lift her in the air, throw her up there so you can start having her fight up in the air much easier, which is great because some of her moves are really effective, especially like against a wind guy or something. She has like a wind ability. So I'm like, you're adding just little, like their weaknesses and strengths are shown, but you're giving me a little boost to their weaknesses if I need to make them work which I'm like yes this is all really good stuff and like Cloud has this one where Barrett he reflects Barrett's bullets off his sword and shoots them at guys so if you need a little more space or distance you can just totally do that which I really love Uh, the dodge rolling feels much better this time around also I feel like I can dodge stuff much more reliably than I couldn't remake Yeah. so I've been doing a lot more the perfect guard is so nice. So I love perfect love guards. That. Perfect guard it, big stagger damage, and you take no damage from that guard. Love that. And of course, there, I'm not exactly what the term is, but it's like their dual limit breaks. 
that you get from just doing uh, ATB moves with everybody. And they're so good. Adding bonuses also like longer stagger. So if you stagger someone, then you do that. It'll go up even further. Stuff like we have ma- like infinite mana for a little bit. It's just all really good, more situational tools that you can have at your disposal. You probably don't need to use everything. Like you could probably get through most of the stuff just kind of brute forcing a lot of it. But it's just that extra flavor that I really love of making counters feel so much more dynamic. And like you're saying, Cog, like every new character is so good. Like Red 13 playing as Red, he feels so awesome. He feels exactly how he should be, you know? This crazy feral animal, super fast dodging around, shredding guys, doing that sweet spin attack. Man. And his mode, I love his, like, uh, the vengeance mode. I love how you build up that gauge just by blocking and stuff like that. Then you unleash it and you feel crazy. Like, some of his moves are stronger in that form. Yeah, bro. It's really awesome. I love that kind of stuff. You get into that health siphoning loop with him as well. With that, it's really... Yeah, his his close combat is insane, and and I think it's a it's another one. It's like Sentinel Stance or something like mm-hmm. that, where you get into that mode. Yeah, he he's. I was very impressed, but to your point, I interrupt you. I, I love no, no. the the identity that they they're trying to really lean into more with each character. It, it's really good, absolutely. Yeah, and some of like my least favorite characters to play as in the first game, they've actually improved a lot. I think like Aerith and Barrett, I think are way more fun this time around like Aerith gets some really cool like a new circle she could put down like one where you can shoot like lasers out almost and what's really cool about it is if you have one of her like wards down and if you're far away you could teleport to it so if like you need to get away from an enemy or something like that you can do defensive strat one of her synergy abilities is like someone will get in front of her to block like Barrett or Cloud does it I'm just like yes this just makes it so good i love all that stuff and barrett man he's so awesome dude i love playing as barrett like he's of course got the charge up like you get the full meter and he just unloads a lot yeah then you get some like abilities like other bullets basic bullets that you can do that you can put on like they just do more damage and more staggers so you can really chip away and being able to like charge his like uh his gun or after a combo a little easier makes just getting that up way more fun. Mm-hmm. Kind of reminds me of like a Gears Award perfect reload, you know, which always feels good. Oh, but if yeah. you get that perfect with Barrett, he Ooh. gets like a little extra charge. So so far I've been really impressed with all that. And of course, just the materia has been a lot of fun, as always. There's lots of good materials to get out there. Enemy skill, fun. Love all that enemy course, skill. Of course. They also added the, um, like, your team has, like, a level, like, the team level. You know, you do stuff and quests, you ranks up your team, and when you get a rank, it unlocks kind of, like, new skills for your particular character. It kind of replaces the weapons uh, sphere thing in the first game. Mm-hmm. But now it's just like, hey, if you get, you could get this thing where you can maybe get, like, plus three normal damage, or it's like, hey, here's a whole new synergy attack for you to do with. Mm-hmm. So there's some useful things in there that incentivizes you, in my opinion, to like do a lot more quests and all that kind of stuff because you want to rank all that good stuff up. And you got to make choices. You know, you can't get everything right away. So it's been I've been really satisfied with all that kind of stuff because there is really good stuff in there. Like you could get uh, spells or essentially abilities that are like a fire spell, but it doesn't require any magic. So you can just always have that. You don't have to have a fire material on it. Mm-hmm. It may not be as effective, but it's still there if you need it in a pinch or whatever to get like that last bit of stagger gauge out there. So I just love more stuff like that. It gives you even more yeah. freedom. So you don't feel as locked into some material as I would say you did before. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. I was going to ask you guys, both of you, how do you feel about it's funny after just playing Infinite Wealth, you know, I'm used to seeing people with these smiley faces about their emotions right. on their head. Yeah. Right? So I'm curious how you guys feel about this whole, you know, system of you know, kind of pleasing your companions and based mm-hmm. on quick decisions, what we notice with a meter. Yeah, right? I do like that. Yeah. So how have you, what's your experiences with it so far? I'm curious. Yeah, man, it's definitely, I've been like caught off guard a lot of times with it. And I'm like, uh, and I'm just trying to <laughs> think about, I'm like, okay, what does this character want to actually hear and stuff like that? And I made like a wrong decision. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> they're, they're like, okay. And I was like, ah. Mm-hmm. But it, it feels good. I wonder what that will lead up to. I'm not exactly sure. I have some guesses where it might go, but I'm curious to see how that will continue to build yeah. throughout the game. 
There was less of what was your fear with Eric yeah. wanted you on, on a date and what was going on? Yeah, well, <laughs> it's it's funny coming off of Persona. It's like, oh, there's got some social link esque mechanics mm-hmm. in this game. And and Brad, you mentioned like, okay, what does this person want to hear? <laughs> which it's I was I was thinking about Persona. It's very much there's that book which I hate the title. It's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's like a very famous book, and it's very much like, okay, well. It, what is what does this person want to hear right now? And it can be very stressful because yeah. I said something to Aerith that I kind of I, I pissed her off a little bit. And I was like, no. Yeah. Oh. And the persona player in me is like, OK, just rewind a little bit. And like, no, no, no. Uh, I think it was there's something like she's like, oh, do you know how we first met? And I was thinking, <laughs> oh, I'm going to tell her <laughs> the exact moment because I remember the exact moment. It's when she gave me the flower. But the way mm. Cloud said it is like, you, sh- you shoved the flower in my face. It's like, oh. <laughs> and then she's like, yeah, you gave that to another girl, you asshole. It's like, <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. It's like, I justified it because I was like, okay, I don't want to accidentally romance her. I don't know if this game has romance or something, mm-hmm. but I'm sure it has dates and stuff you go on. So mm-hmm. it's like, Aerith, I love you, but you're not my girl. Uh, Tifa's yeah. my girl. So Tifa's if, cool. if I pissed you off a little bit, it's okay, I guess. But yeah, she, she was like, you want to go to the, the tower or whatever? Yeah. And I was like, nah, <laughs> she got mad at me. And I was like, sorry. Dude, <laughs> that stressed me out, too, because I thought I said yes to her because it was one of the first. I was like, oh, this yeah. is cool. It's something I can do. And I thought, oh, no. What if Tifa wanted to hang out with me? Yeah, what if Tifa <laughs> saw you? She's like grabbing yeah. my hand, pulling me in. I'm like, no, 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 girl. Like, yeah. no, no, you're no, great. No. I love no, you, no, but. No. Yeah, you're not. You're not the one. Yeah, keep friends. the boundaries. <laughs> keep the yeah. boundaries, dude. <laughs> what I'm curious about, maybe to explain this, and I already forgot, is I was just mm. curious because you know it has the little symbol above their head, and I'm like, okay, so what does this mean? Is it going to be later on where am I going to be locked out of stuff because I'm not close enough to this person yet? Is there different bonuses and combat mm-hmm. through synergies by being closer to them? Because the first time you do a combat synergy. It will tell you, it'll be like, your relationship with this person has deepened. Yes, so yes. It is important at least to go in and and do those at least once uh, in order to deepen those relationships. But it is, it adds a, a fun little layer that I, as even though it is stressful in the moment where you're like, okay, what do I got to say here? I don't want to, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but I like, I like relationship meters in games as mm-hmm. a Persona fan. So, so to see that come over is, is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, Pl- pleasant surprise for me too. Let's talk about Queen's Blood. Ooh. Yeah, Queen's Blood, a new card game. Of course, we had Fort Condor in intermission. We have Queen's Blood also this time. Oh boy, uh, guys, uh, I'm addicted to this game. Good lord, I play every single person. I beat every single person. I collect every card. I buy every card I can. I love it. I cannot stop playing Queen's Blood when there's someone there. Like someone's talking shit. They want to throw down. I'm throwing down cards immediately. And I think it's such a good little card game, dude. It's different enough from Triple Triad where I feel like it stands out perfectly. Like, of course, you got awesome monster cards, but I love the idea of taking territory on this board. But also the risk is if you move in too quick, they could take some of your territory or flip it around on you. So I've just been I'm always thinking about that kind of stuff. And later on, it gets crazier because some of the cards that come out have like different effects on them. Like you, this card gets put down in it, weakens every card around it or something like that. And that can be used for your advantage or can be a disadvantage for you because some cards can build off that like synergy with that. If like a card Mm -hmm. takes damage this card will get more damage or something like that. So there's a lot to think about. And I just, I just love it, dude. It's just so good. Tell me, what do you guys think about Queen's blood? Yeah, I'll jump in. Um, pleasantly surprised. I, as a person who does like card games at first, I just had to understand what, the goals were from a territorial standpoint. I'm like, right. should I be worrying about the lanes first? Should I be? And I start to realize, okay, I can't let, you know, they, them get to the other side or, or get to that middle and, and really dominate certain lanes. And then when I started facing higher end characters, what you said really took it. Like you start to see the, the powerful effects of certain cards and how they af- influence and affect others, including mm-hmm. the placement 
of the cards and like because you you'll see like okay this you put this there that goes up plus two um what's funny is like i, I started getting into the, the soldier card the one that kind of like advances it to to the right and then yeah you know you have the the one the the one pawn piece or the two pawn piece response after um you doing that and when to save the stronger cards you know i think that was a key for me sometimes you gotta like the game tells you as soon as you start, like, hey, which ones you want to move out of play right now? You might want to save those for later. Because mm-hmm. I was making some mistakes in the beginning, like playing strong cards very early. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is not going good for me. And you learn some harsh lessons. But, yeah, it it has surprising depth to it. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that really – I was like, this oh, are three lanes. Okay, you win a lane, you know. I learned the, the 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 harsh realities of what happens if there's a tie yeah. <laughs> on the <a> lane, <laughs> and then the other two scores do count, kind of thing. But yeah, it's really addicting. I'm definitely like you, Brad. I'm going to play every single person. I have to beat every single person in the town. Got to get stronger cards. And then the other thing is, you're gonna, I'm gonna, I know what's gonna happen to me. Is the addiction of the deck building when you get oh yeah bigger cards, and okay, let me take this one out, that yeah. kind of thing. So that's where the I know it's going to start, but yeah, Dustin, where you at with it? Like, how you feeling about uh, the Queen's Blood? Yeah, these games are a hit and miss for me. Not Queen's Blood, but just, you know, the random card games within games. I, I did. I got filtered by Gwent. I tried to play <laughs> it. I never fully understood it. Maybe if I, I was went not big, good at it either. I was never good at it. Never yeah. felt any kind of addiction there. Mm-hmm. And so going in to Queen's Blood initially... My first thought was like, okay, cool. I'm not going to do this. It's It seems cool. And I'm glad they forced me. Forced me. Yeah. They yeah. forced me to play it. And I thought, okay, that was interesting. And then I thought, okay, I'll, there's like the, uh, there's the guy that like talks through a puppet or whatever. And I was like, okay, I got to take this guy down with a loser. He's, he's going down. Uh, and then I, you know, it was like, cog is like, oh, okay. Like once you figure out some basic strategies, like what you need to focus on, how to win. Um, yeah, it definitely now I'm going in and I'm like, OK, who's who wants to throw down here in this new town? Because I'm going to fuck you up immediately, mm-hmm. which is <laughs> not really. There's been a few matches where I was like, I, you know, you're hitting that rematch button over yeah. and over. But I like the way they do it because it's very clear that the different characters you fight have different uh, strategies. And so it kind of teaches you more about how to play the game so it's surprising i i was wondering with how many people are loving and enjoying it i'm like first of all you could probably spin this off into its own thing and i was also thinking the ability to play against other real people Mm -hmm. would be very interesting as well and the other thing too is that even if it would be really hard to play in real life with all the different like to to count it out and stuff I kind of want these cards. I wish it would have come with the deluxe edition. Like, hey, here's a set <laughs> of these cards just to to have would have been neat. But it's definitely uh, taken me by surprise how much I want to play it, especially because Fort Condor, I appreciate. And I'm going to give it another try now. I'm going to be more open to it now in this game. But I wasn't really into that. Either. Dude, what? Fort Condor yeah. is so cool, man. I'm going to I'm going to give it another shot. All uh, right. But when I was playing the when I was playing the DLC last time, mm-hmm. I was trying to get through it before Persona came oh, out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. I was yeah. like, I don't have time for Ford Condor. And I wasn't yeah. it wasn't that it was bad, but it, it didn't immediately strike me as, oh, this is something I want to okay. keep playing. So I'm going to give it a full try when I get to it in Rebirth. Yeah. Well, the, co- the cool thing I like about a lot of the games is their story tied to like the card games and like why you're doing them at some spots. I really like a lot of the people you're playing are very distinct personalities. Mm -hmm. Like you're saying like the puppet guy Mm -hmm. like that. And there's the woman who surrounded herself in boxes like early on. There's some other characters later on down the line that are really fun. So they make going fighting these people pretty enjoyable. So I do appreciate that. Um, let's see. I guess let's talk about just the story so far. Like we'll do very broad strokes about all this. Like, I don't want to spoil stuff. Like, obviously we're going to have to talk about some stuff because we are talking about the video game we're playing. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about the thing that starts at the very beginning of the game. Let's talk about okay? the elephant in the room. Yep. Elephant in the room, it. dude. This is the very beginning of the game. The first thing is your Zach back in Midgard, dude. I, 
<laughs> Dude, okay. I told Dustin this, but I when you booted up the game, it played the same cutscene from the demo. So I was like, all right, skip this. Then it was just me as Zach standing there and I went, whoa, 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 <laughs> dude. I had to yeah. immediately <laughs> quit the game, start a new game. I'm like, how the hell did we get all the way over here, man? <laughs> then when you're just getting there, it's like cl- they're Cloud and Zach are arriving back in Midgar. Kyrie's there talking about Avalanche and you're seeing the footage of like Avalanche members dead, I guess. Like Tifa's like dead. Red 13's like dead. Uh, Eris captured and they get their chopper goes down. Red 13's like dead in the cockpit now, I, I guess like that. And they're talking about a mercenary out there with like a big sword. Still, I'm like, yo, what is happening? I'm like, is there another cloud going on right now? Like, it's this crazy. is crazy, crazy shit happening right, right off the bat of the game, mm-hmm. dude. So I'm so looking forward to figuring out more about that stuff. Like, wow, what a way to start a game. Yeah. And Lord, Brad, Good. one of the big things with that intro is that shows them watching the news report yeah. yes. on the big screen. And then when cloud is in calm, if you notice they're playing the same news report mm-hmm. over the radio. Cause I thought, well, maybe I don't, there's so much with, with the ending of the last game, there's so many crazy directions that could go in where I'm like, is this a totally alternate thing going on separately? Is this happening at the same time? I, I have no idea. I almost have, I have zero theories that I can even start to make because it's just, I have no idea what's going on. I I remember that I did see, you talked about how it shows all the characters dead. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and he goes and again, very beginning of the game, Zach goes and, and finds, uh, Aerith and she, Mm -hmm. it seems like she's dead. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing that clip from one of the trailers and, and I remember someone's like, those, those are body doubles. And now I'm like, I don't, think so i don't think those are body doubles but but they're not them because they're not they're there dead. They're not yeah. dead. They're yeah. i'm so, confused but yeah dude yeah getting to play as zach was sweet though yeah it was like yeah. hell yeah yeah good to be zach again good to be love zach, zach again oh yeah gotta love it i'm sorry Dustin, you oh no i was just i'm so curious about how zach plays out further in the game just Again, I'm on chapter three or something, so I have not seen any more Zach. We should probably we'll just mm. put a spoiler warning up to chapter yeah. three in the timestamp. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. Carl, where are you at? Yeah, we, me and Dustin probably in the same pocket. I'm literally so, yeah. in the that's second. Like Junon? Yeah, I'll okay. Junon. Yep, that's where yeah. I'm at. So then we could talk about the mithril mines and going through yes. there, yeah. which I I really liked going through that, especially when like the party got split up for a little bit. You know. They're chasing mm-hmm. the robed guys. Of course, hearing the music, I was like, yes, this is so good. This is exactly how it should be in modern terms. Mm-hmm. And the robed guys just like fall down, down into the depths. And Barrett's like, I have experience in caves. I'm going to go after them kind of thing. And Red joins. And I'm like, all right. I love the Red and Barrett dynamic, dude. I yes. love to see them together. Beautiful. They're so great together. Mm-hmm. And of course, mm-hmm. you get split off. Then eventually you run into the Turks. Great to see Elena now. Dude. I love seeing her there with Rude. First time she's shown mm-hmm. up in remake games. She's awesome. The fight with them was really cool. I mm-hmm. had a good time fighting both of them. Of course, Sung showing up. Yeah. Always good. Classic, love that kind classic, of stuff. Classic. Then later getting to play as Barrett and Red 13 just together on their own, going through the caves and shooting all the rocks and stuff like that. I love I love little stuff like that. I thought that was really fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. there, it's like I thought like Barrett, it's like, there's all these beautiful, naturally forming rocks of material and stuff. And Barrett's like, yeah, blow that shit up. Yeah. Just, just <laughs> blast it off the wall. <laughs> Fuck. For someone who cares so much about the earth and nature, he gives yeah. no regard to the beauty of the cave. That's yeah. a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> I do want to back you up a second, though. I don't want to uh, minimize the um. I like that. The What is it? The, the big snake thing in the bar. Yes, dude. Fight. The Midgar something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That Love fight that was fight. pretty cool. And it, it's like, it's something about Final Fantasy VII when it comes to those boss battles and that music hits mm-hmm. and the adrenaline and, and they make you work. And I like what they do things, whether it's, you know, disable a character, take, they try to do things to make you get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And use the other characters to try to either gain stagger or stop certain effects. And I thought that was cool. Then we saw, I don't know what you guys thought about it, you know, when Cloud got taken under Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. we saw the the Sephiroth uh, vision and that whole thing. So again, to your point, Dustin, we've got 
the curiosity of what the hell are they doing with Zach, right? This is, they're literally ripping the bandaid off as soon as you start the game to say whatever he's experiencing, we're going to follow his journey that may be parallel or not parallel. And then the Sephiroth thing, which is very interesting to me because it's like, there's a part of me that feels like, okay, he's aware of the first defense of the first game and mm-hmm. he's trying to do his own thing. So clearly, obviously, he saves, you know, Cloud from this situation because Cloud was going under <laughs> right. with this thing. So I, it it's it's going to be fun and fascinating to just know where this journey goes with a lot of these main characters based on the original game. So I just wanted to, you know, shout that out. But yeah, the minds are, are super high because I do like the idea of, one, separating the characters. Mm -hmm. Two, to their credit, I didn't think they would do this, which is even though, you know, you you always a party of three. For the most part, the five are around, you mm-hmm. know, all the time. They, yeah, they they're around. Sometimes they're sh- like Barrett. If he's not your party, sometimes shooting a few shots off. Yeah, I thought that was interesting from a gameplay and graphical design. Like, I was like, would that be taxing? I thought they would just show us the three, and that, and that would be fine. Whatever the three that you picked as part mm-hmm. of your party, but they consistently kind of show you know that we're all they're together there. as a group, a unit, even yeah. though that. Yeah, everyone is uh, participating all the time. So I thought that was an interesting, you know, graphical design decision, but I'm loving it, man. I, I am just yeah. loving it. This is such a fun journey. The game just feels like a fun adventure. And I just love it. Even though the dialogue can be silly sometimes, yeah. Aerith makes me laugh. She's just so adorably ridiculous. <laughs> like, let's go. All right. Yeah. How does that work? You know, that kind of thing. So it, it, I've been loving it so far. Uh I like that you brought up the Midgar Summer thing or whatever you say his name. The snake. Yeah. Cool boss fight, first of all, on his own, yes. like wrapping around the tree and like Sweet. the fire and all that stuff. And you brought up the Sephiroth thing. But I like about that is Cog because it that that snake ends up exactly how we remember how that snake mm-hmm. ended up. Mm-hmm. We just see it happen now, yes. actually, in a different yes. way. So I was like, oh, yeah, OK, mm-hmm. I see what you're doing here, I guess. Maybe mm-hmm. things how we're getting there is different, but maybe it'll end the same. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Another yeah. dynamic to bring up about the, the Sephiroth mystery and something I just really enjoyed in general is that how he was sowing the seeds of doubt within cloud and his yes. relationship with Tifa was mm-hmm. pretty interesting. Pretty yes. sneaky. Sneaky. And I like how they're going into that because from Tifa's perspective, she should be like, what the fuck, Cloud? Like, you are, <laughs> you are, what is going on here? Like, what are you saying? And so the fact that she's kind of like, yeah, I, I'm testing you a little bit. And, and you know, Sephiroth's saying some stuff about her that has me questioning things. Like, what, what is he trying to say? So <laughs> I like that a little, even though I, I was mentioning how, how fun and happy the game feels, there is a little bit of a, uh, you know, some tough toughness going on here, yeah. too, that yeah. is adding an interesting dynamic. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like the original. It was, the original was silly and goofy a lot of times, but mm-hmm. get serious, man. Definitely. Oh, yeah. So the tone oh, yeah. is c- cont- continued over masterfully, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, dude, shout out to not only the Chocobos. Oh, yeah. Normal Chocobos, the different colored Chocobo, like the black yeah. one being able to climb yeah. the walls, dude. Wall. That's Love sick. stuff like that. Traversal more with chocobos. Really good. I'm a big fan of making the different colored ones have different abilities, just like the old game. So I'm glad that's staying around. Also love getting them their little armor sets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love getting them new gear, strutting them around. Good <laughs> stuff, dude. Really How we feeling stuff. about the... Um... I call it like the sniffing mechanic where they, they, they oh, notice they, something. <laughs> yeah, that's classic doing? chocobo stuff to me. Yeah. Like, reminds me of Final Fantasy IX a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm into it. You don't have to do them all, but some of them are missions, I guess. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and, and, you can run and as a result, you get like some material stuff. Like, how are you guys feeling specifically about the what do you call it, the transmutation, the creating of your own mm-hmm. items? Are you guys experimenting that? Are you guys doing oh, yeah. armor stuff, or are you just doing potions? Or how are you you doing everything? How I'm you, making how everything I can because you get like anything that I haven't made before. I do make at least once because you get like the XP for that, the bonus or whatever. So I'm I'm just trying to level that up really high because i wonder if like that's how you get like the best gear in the game or something like that at the end i'm just thinking like that yeah you're your long term that's you doing the same thing you've been messing around with it yeah i've just been kind of trying to level level it up um i haven't found any of the gear to be that useful (laughs) so far but i understand i'm low level Mm -hmm. this is somewhat related and unrelated and i'm curious how you guys are finding this 
because this was a problem in the first game, but it was immediately a problem, at least to me. And maybe there's something I'm not understanding. Why is it that potions don't do anything in this game <laughs> right off the bat? Like, dude, potions are so weak and the healing, obviously, it, like if you do a, you know, a healing spell, it's very dependent on that person's magic ability. So like, I'm like, man, I got to keep Aerith on almost all the time because she's her healing actually right. heals me. Unlike right. some of these other characters that their healing spell just isn't as powerful. That's one thing that's been kind of annoying me is that and uh, people could say it's a skill issue, but as many times I'm like, man, I am low on health. My entire party is low on health. Uh, I've got a few high potions early in the game, but I mainly just got regular potions and they barely do anything. They're not even worth using in uh-huh. battle. So there's there's something up with the economy of healing in this game to me a little <laughs> bit, if that makes sense. Yeah, that um, doesn't make sense. I get that, Dustin. Yeah. Maybe uh, it's my, just the way the way that my style of playing is is just not quite right, but I don't know. Sure. Also I'll, I'll tell you my approach to how it's been. I treat potions like a normal potion as like a top off kind of thing. Sure. Usually after battle, just if I want to top off. I do like because mana is I'm not like flo- I don't have like an insane amount of mana all the time. Like I do have to think about when I'm casting stuff. So what I've done, Dustin, is got to use the MP plus materials on mm-hmm. those characters that are like your main healers. But I also have like Cloud. I always always have heals on Cloud. Like he can do big heal spells. Like I feel like it's nice to not have to rely on one person one. all yeah, the time for mm-hmm. healing. Like I have Barrett as like good healing too and stuff like that. And uh, I don't think Tifa does. Tifa is like straight just damage for me. But like. A lot of the other characters, I just have healing on the side also. So it kind of alleviates a lot of the stress and pressure from other people. Like if I'm doing like the big, crazy heals, though, I'm like, OK, we'll have Aerith out here in this encounter if I need it. Mm-hmm. But to me, she is like the white mage of the group. Yeah. So, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. But everyone else can I think has effective off healing. Yeah, I, I what I've done to to counter it, because I understand your point, Dustin, which is like the, the, the potion just don't give a lot of energy in mm-hmm. the heat of it. So I'm the same way as you, um, Brad. I use that as top off post fight kind of thing. But what, what's helped me is I'll use material where if you get it from Chadley, you could have Aerith like auto cast mm-hmm. some of her ability to so when you're not using those on when you're not have self control of her sometimes so that she's always doing the big. Uh, pray spell when when I kind of need it. So yeah, I know what you mean because it's it's that push pull. And then historically, Final Fantasy it's all about repetition, you know, with the materia and doing it as many times, kind of thing, which can be annoying sometimes. Cause you always gotta you know put in the work with it. But I, I feel like these some of the support materials have been really effective. And then I play like you also with um Eric that says like I give her like all the different elements. She's the mate. She's like okay, mm-hmm. so who Cloud will ass- or, or Red will assess. Okay, what's your week? Okay, cool. Then I will then deploy (laughs) the material or element that corresponds to that weakness to get that stagger going. And that's how I've been playing. But yeah, to the to the point of um, I I get the sense that they really want us to to invest in that transmute and make these stronger potions. I'm just getting that vibe now. It seems like they they made a conscious design decision to not have to worry about going to the town and, and buying us a whole bunch of them. Mm-hmm. They just want us to kind of you know, scrounge and, and material based, almost like a survival game in a way and, and make our own stuff. Yeah. You could build some nice potions. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, high yeah. potions are just the new potion. I essentially yeah, right. say like, they're good enough. Yeah. But uh, yeah, totally. Um, I got here. Let's get into some more questions. Cause I, I don't want to like, sw- it's hard with this game. Cause we don't want to talk about so much stuff. Because I just mm-hmm. don't want to. Like, I know people are going through the game also. Let's get into this is from. Uh, who was it? Endigo. Hello, fellow Bradley Ellis effect enjoyers. Why I don't actually have a question since I'm a patron of LSM and a longtime supporter of Brad. I thought I needed to jump in since you're discussing FSM Rebirth. I'm actually the singer on the track that plays during the Desert Rush minigame. I know Colin used to listen to my band back in the day, but I don't think he knew this. So there you go. Have you gotten to that part of the game yet? And have you heard the song? Sorry to hog us any spotlight that I've been keeping all this secret for all these years, but I've been keeping the secret for all these years. Keep on keeping on and die go. So I haven't gotten to this mini game yet, but I did listen to the song, though. Very cool. I had no idea that we had a fan that was in the game, actually. 
That's so, awesome. That's that dope. is really awesome. That's I can't wait to dope. get to that part though. Yeah, same. Yeah, like, shout I'm going to pay attention. Super. Hard. I need that down. Yeah. I don't know this. Shout cool. out. Yeah, it's a cool song. All right. It's from Grant. Hey, Summoners. We talked about this a little, but we can touch on a little more. Hey, Summoners. I'm just curious what you guys think of the card game Queen's Blood and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm still figuring it out a bit, but I like how aggressive and quick the game feels. Not sure if it'll top Triple Triad or Gwent, but I'm glad Final Fantasy is getting back into the doing the game within a game thing again. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I love like Final Fantasy seven, in my opinion, was super famous for mini games. Like they just made so many games like, compared to the past Final Fantasies. So it's really great to get uh, even more mini games that are actually really good to and with a lot of depth. I'm pretty surprised how much there is and like i haven't even gotten a gold saucer yet so i can't even you wait to see yet. what's going on oh, yeah. there what yeah. crazy shit we're going into there but i think yeah we're all pretty positive on queen's blood right now we're having a good time oh yeah oh yeah i think it's it's i think the thing that i like about the mini games that the way they've done it is one they do kind of force you to get to get into it right but yeah. it, then it gives you that appreciation and then you, you end up liking it but one thing i have to give them credit is that i've been very happy with them being transparent on what rewards are for side quests and mini yeah. games like queen's blood that to me is worth it because i'm like okay is the juice worth the squeeze what am i getting out of this and you get some really powerful cards yeah. <laughs> out of this thing man yeah man you start to notice the effects of these things so yeah i, I would say that's the 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 biggest you know pleasant surprise about being in it because at first i was like dust i'm like man i just want to play i want to convince the story why are you forcing me to do it like mm-hmm. i was mad at first i was like i was really annoyed but then i'm like all right this is kind of cool all right i'm getting it and then the competitive start, start side gets to you where you're like okay no i'm going to beat everyone here like i need i i'm gonna hit this rematch you're gonna try again and i'm gonna learn this thing and get these mechanics now um i have a point but we'll get into it after this question because it could relate this is from kun Weird name to say, but I see you in Discord. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Bradley Cogston. Oh, curious to hear your thoughts on the open world design of Rebirth. To me, after the breathtakingly unique design of every corner remake, it's a little disappointing to see so much familiar checklist style trappings in the new game. My OCD kicked in immediately, and I felt like I had no choice but to do everything available, which burns me out a bit. That being said, this is where the original game turned to the open world and Rebirth is just about the best the best an open world can be in the modern era. It's very cool to see Square borrowing uh, liberally from other Sony bangers like Ghost of Tsushima. Hope you're all enjoying it immensely. Love, Kun. Yeah, the the birds, dude, that fly to like the live stream thing. That is 100% Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, yeah, that's a fox they right there waiting to happen. Mm hmm. I'm curious about this point of the breathtakingly unique design of every corner of remake, because I feel like I don't agree with that. Like some of the side quests of remake are just like whatever. But that's fine. But yeah, this is the point of the open world. This is the part of the game that is opening up. And that's such an important contrast to have from little Midgar. One thing I like about the open world is I'm curious to hear what you guys think about this is so there's obviously a lot of activities you can go out and do there like fight monsters for Chadley and all that stuff. One thing I do think is interesting is he gives you the option to fight the summon right away. But if you go out in the world and do like find those um, those materia things, I think there are live stream parts. It can lower the difficulty for the materia if you're having trouble getting it. So if you really want to and you're really focused and good, you can get the material much earlier or the summon much earlier to use, which is awesome. But like, hey, if you want to put out the work and just get them all down there, you can make it easier for yourself if you want. You just got to put the time in. That's one aspect I do like about it a lot. But what do you guys think about the open world? Yeah, go ahead, Cog. I, I kind of touched mm-hmm. on it earlier, so I'm, mm-hmm. I'm curious yeah. what you think. Look, I think it's the, the, the initial feel felt good all right i was like okay this is cool I'm, I'm i'm able to you know go around and explore these different waypoints that had very different objectives i will admit 
the tower part was like, mm-hmm. eh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm like Assassin's Creed. Okay, we're going to open this part up kind of thing. <laughs> you know, I get it, you know, kind of thing. But again, if the content to me is not compelling, if it wasn't compelling and it didn't reward me well, then I would have a bigger problem with it. So the fact that I like both aspects of it, you know, even like the foolishness, what is it, the, with the Moogles and... <laughs> And then, yeah. oh, Luke, yeah. I was like, Dude, I was yeah. like if these little things don't get in this playpen. Like I'm chasing these, <laughs> they're, they're terrorizing me. These little yeah, dude. <laughs> so I was able to do that. But um, and then I, I encountered what I thought was funny was um the guys from the first game. Those 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 idiots. They like they're oh, fake the bandits. thugs. Yeah, the bandits, and, like yeah. Hella- and then they got that theme song. I remember I got the soundtrack from the first game, and they have this funny little quirky theme song that mm-hmm. always plays within it. So I thought it was cool that you had like a multi-tiered thing that also invites it, it, uh, it had stealth mechanics. So I was like, okay, this is this is interesting. So again, they do again, again it's early though. I got to see if this is going to wear on me later. Mm-hmm. I'm in the honeymoon phase now. Mm-hmm. So far, liking it, not too crazy. You're rewarding me. Fine. If it gets redundant, to your point, um, Brad, you kind of said you, the stuff you're seeing is even cooler Mm-hmm. Quest wise, but to to Kun's point, I have to admit because I litigate so much, the, the, the problem is you, my OCD does kick in, and it's like, uh, damn, it's all this stuff, and I'm I can't just go to the next area because I could get more powerful, and you know what I'm saying? Right, like, so right. that's where I'm like, damn, there's a part of me that I'm like, man, I do kind of just want to play the game and advance this story and know what's going on, but the OCD of what they're doing now knows I'm going to put in a thousand hours of this thing. It reminds me of Infinite Wealth in that respect because grinding does benefit you in this game and mm-hmm. i feel so far so that's where i'm at with it yeah i totally agree <laughs> yeah i think um i'm pretty good at open world games now just doing what i want to do where i'm like okay with just leaving stuff my ocd has calmed down on that front so i'm just like all right i'll just do what i think is fun it's whatever and i'm pretty sure later on in this game you you'll be able to come back or whatever and clean up some stuff if you miss some things but i get it I get it. Like personally, for me, I'm doing everything because I just fucking love the world and I want to like know every single inch about everything. But I totally get it. My advice is just to be just do the things that you want, then move on. Don't you, you don't want to have to you, you shouldn't want to feel like you're doing homework, essentially. You know, like, OK, I got to do, do this. Chores. I gotta do this. You don't <laughs> want to get to that point. I would recommend doing at least the side quests, the green markers, if you can. Yes. Yes. At least do those. Yeah, because they have like a lot more story tied to them. All right. Uh, Nico Fragan. Fragoin. I don't know how you say that name. Roden. What's up, Brad and crew? Are any of you playing Rebirth on the dynamic difficulty? I started on normal, but was curious about that mode. Loving Rebirth. The attention to detail in the world is astonishing. All right, so uh, dynamic this. difficulty is something I'm not usually too big of a fan in, in games. Essentially, what it is, like a lot of the Resident Evil games have this. If you're doing really well, the game will get harder. But if you're doing poorly, the game will get easier. So I think it's fine, but I haven't tried it in this yet because I was like, I'm just going to play normal and I'm going to see how things go. And I kind of like the feeling of normal right now where I'm at in the game. So I'm not messing with it. I'm not like steamrolling guys super easy yet. I'm like having to like actually fight a lot of the bosses and think about what I'm doing, but I'm not like getting my ass kicked either. So I'm kind of like in a nice sweet spot right now. That may change later on, but I do like the option of that being there. I think that's really cool and adds some more replay value. But uh, personally, I haven't messed with it. Yeah. What about you? Guys? I'm not interested in this mode at all. I got to say, I like particularly in RPGs, if I go out and work hard and grind and then there's a payoff where and I guess I understand how some perspective would be like, oh, well, now this is boring. It's too easy. It's like, Mm -hmm. well, no, I feel like it's a it's a payoff for all the work I've done. It's like, man, now I can I can kind of cream through these enemies for a little bit with no issues. And then eventually it'll catch up. And it's like, oh, I got to go work again. Uh, But if you want the the challenge all the time, then I think that's cool. But that mode would take out some of the pleasure of an rpg from for mm-hmm. me at least yeah i'm the same i'm, I'm pretty much because again i like that the feature exists for those that want that that level of of challenge and dynamic 
scaling, so to speak. But I'm the same way. If I'm putting in tons of hours and I'm making synergies and I'm getting materia and I'm, I'm creating builds and then now I'm getting to the point where I am powerful, I, I like that feeling mm-hmm. you know, so until you get to the next area. So I, I'm with you, Brad. I feel like the game right now, you know, the difficulty is just fine. I feel like I can't be on cruise control and autopilot for certain fights, but some of the enemies in the open world, you do get the thrash once you get stronger. So, and mm-hmm. I like that. <laughs> I yeah. like that feeling. Yeah, I think that's an important kind of thing. Like we we're saying in RPGs, you know, to feel rewarded for your work. You don't want to feel like you're dumpstering on every single thing, right. but some guys, yeah, it does feel good to do that. All right, this is the last question. This is from Elliot Hillis. Hello, DC Universe. DC Universe? Uh, well, it should be DCB, Dustin Brad Cog Universe. Oh. Oh, there you go. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I misunderstood. I thought, I was like, I thought of like, of course, the DC Universe with like Batman stuff, and I was like, Dreamcast Universe? Mm. Which I am also into, so I'm just going to choose to believe Dreamcast Universe. That's what we going with. Good. In, a, in an era where the Sega Dreamcast was a hit and we lived on with Sega. That Dreamcast. <laughs> so good. I'm mm-hmm. just, I, I need a Dreamcast. I do not have one. I need to buy one. Mm. Uh, I, I have never one. Have I have one. no controllers, though. Damn. <laughs> I got it. There was like a $10 yard sale special for the, the Dreamcast. Right oh, now. yeah. You had to oh, snag that. Yeah. Up. 10 yeah, bucks. I got to get some other stuff for it, though. Nice. You got to snag that. So, like, there's a lot of great games on there I haven't played, man. Mm-hmm. Same Classic. with Saturn. I would love a Saturn. Mm, yeah mm-hmm. but those are expensive as hell especially at the games i think are dude the insane. games are insane yeah some of those so, like uh working design rpgs you're yeah. talking 300 bucks yeah it's, <laughs> a disc it's like it's bad hell. news dude all right i'm so glad to hear you're going to be discussing fs7 rebirth as it reminds me of my all-time favorite moments in, gr- in gaming the moment in e3 2005 15 when Brad, Kyle Bossman, and Michael Huber provided as what can be only described as an absolutely epic reaction to the Final Fantasy VII Remake announcement. At this point, the image of Kyle curled up in a fetal position on top of the stool saying, what are you doing? While the sounds of Brad and Michael shouting unintelligible exclamations of joy will be forever be seared into my brain. I still go back and watch it every now and then. Jason just gets me pumped about video games. Brad, since you were a participant, can you describe how you felt that day as well as whether or not you feel like the FF remake project is earning its hype? Few games stir up that kind of passion. I'm curious what other stories either of you might have of about games that generated that kind of anticipation and ended up paying off or not. Love the show. Thanks for all the hard work you guys do. And for continuing to stroke the fire of fandom. Mm. So, yeah, that was a weird moment. That was E3 2015. Mm. You know, we heard rumblings about the game, you know, over the years we did. Everyone kind of heard about him. But just to like when that trailer came on and I heard a few notes kicking in, I'm like, oh, shit, it's happening, dude. So I just started freaking out. And Huber knew how big of an FF7 fan I was. Like, Huber is the Shenmue fan in that room. Oh, so okay. He, okay. Was, he cried when Shenmue 3 got shown yeah, up. Like, legit I, cried. Grow man tears, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, so he was freaking out because not only was it happening, he was freaking out for me because I was so hyped. And Kyle obviously was an FF7 fan, so we were all freaking out. How we were feeling after that, like, obviously, we were, it was the whole thing of, like, the year where uh, dreams came true, that kind of moment. We were all so high on all that. Uh, from when the game started, like when it was announced and hearing things about it, like that is cyber connect 22 and like maybe not going so good. I was like, Oh no, here we go again. <laughs> kind of thing like square Enix energy. I remember just being disappointed with a lot of their stuff in the earlier days, PS3 era mostly, but man, I'm really happy with how these projects have turned out. I'm so pleased, man. As a longtime Final Fantasy fan, like many others, I've been having a great time. I know it doesn't, not everyone uh, likes it as much as I do and stuff like that. Or, you know, people got problems with it. That's totally fine. But for me personally, I've just been so happy going through these games because it's given me the excitement that I really felt that day. Not only is I'm seeing a lot of things familiar, 
which is great, but I'm seeing them in a whole new way and a whole mm-hmm. new story approach that's keeping me guessing as a longtime fan who theoretically should know everything. Like we're in the dark with a lot of stuff that too, that a lot of people are in the dark with. So it's very exciting. And to top it off, the games have actually been really good. Yeah. Like they're not like bad games. So that is a huge victory right away. So I'm very pleased. Yeah, yeah, I'll jump in. This is um, very nostalgic for me because E3 2015 was the first E3 I've ever been to. And um, mm-hmm. I was there. I was there. It was definitely the grown man tears energy, E3 of dreams energy. Mm-hmm. And you see it and you're just like, wow, is this happening? And I've always been on the record. Um, I'm weird, even though, you know, I know the Sacred Boys, you guys, you, you guys are PlayStation aficionados. And, and I'm the guy that PlayStation 1 was always near and dear to me. That was, right. you know, Sony's entrance into the game. They were aggressive. We're coming at Nintendo. We're here. And I just love the uniqueness of the titles. But I remember specifically when that game dropped. And I, I, that was the first time I was able to get my casual friends to pay attention to JRPGs mm-hmm. and the stories. And they're just like, what is happening? And then the graphics at its time, you know, the old pre-rendered backgrounds, you know, with the, with the, the Polygon characters and stuff like that, the summons and all that. So, yeah, you know, just to say like, yo, they're doing this? They're making this? Like, what? Like, really? And then, okay, is it going to be a crash grab? Are they going to really, how are they going to do it, right? And to see it elevate and then to get to what we get now is what you say, what the games are actually good. And the reimagining of these classic, this classic story in, you know, modern time with high fidelity. Right. And these get these games look good. We got to just mm-hmm. call for all, like they really they taking the yeah. time. And that that was my only concern. Like, OK, are you going to catch? Are you going to really pay attention to detail? How how are certain things that were quirky? back then that may not translate in a certain era or maybe will you be afraid not to do that like i remember we went to the don cordio i was right, like yeah. are they, they going to do it or like are you going you know and they're like nope we're doing it you know, kind of thing so that that's been pleasant for me you know and to your point the last thing is just that all the classic stuff but just enough new spin and curiosity and mystery to 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 to, to flip it on its head a little bit to make it steep feel f- fresh and brand new so mm-hmm. yeah it, that was man i remember that i remember i remember seeing it and i was losing it i was it was it was crazy for me so for, yeah totally in the same pocket as, as you and easy alagaza that's how it was brad uh i think it's important to point out if, if you know you're younger maybe you weren't around uh before even the remake project was announced the amount of Blue balls and edging Final yes. Fantasy VII fans yes. endured between <laughs> at the PS3. They had the tech demo thing where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, they, they showed the beginning. They're like, look at what we can do on PS3. And they're and it's like, are you remaking it? No. It's like, OK, <laughs> then you have uh, the P- at PSX when they bring up the Final Fantasy VII logo. Like, oh, yeah, you're get, we'll, we're going to port the old game. Like yeah. the way they built that up was so rude, insanely rude, disrespectful. Yeah. So when people go and and what I do, people got to go watch. If you look, if you search Final Fantasy VII Remake re- Reaction, you put game trailers or whatever. Uh, Brad, this video has 2.5 million views of yeah. a. Re- this is a re-upload. Yeah, it's a re. <laughs> uh, so you got to see no. young Brad on there. Yeah. And the reaction that it's important to keep the context of of like this was a, and I think it's. What when you guys are watching the trailer, it's like, oh, it's going to be a movie. It's going to be, yeah. They're not going to so do it. Cynical, dude, about all that shit. Yeah, and then they, you know, at the very end, it just says remake, and that's Ooh, the yeah. that's after years, like I said, years of uh, like the disrespect. Well, I guess not disrespect because they're doing it. They did it and stuff, but the PSX thing was egregious. It if was you guys edging. remember that. You're right. Yeah, it was, it's edging. It was the edging. It was many many years of edging that finally. uh was released so yeah. <laughs> yeah this that video that reaction is is great that was i i knew about that and loved that video long before i knew brad um and it's just uh it's nice we have it's such a cynical industry now you know we're on twitter all the time mm-hmm. talking shit and all this stuff and just to see these moments where it's like oh no this is just pure joy love yeah. of the medium yeah and I can't recommend it enough. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Just to add on to your point, because you're cooking. I think that 
that's the beauty of gaming for me. When especially when you know someone loves something to their core and their dream comes true, and you you see it, whether you're a part of it or even if it's not mine, I'm like, yo, that's dope because you know how much that means to that person. So yeah, for me, this was that game. I was just like, I cannot believe it. No more teasing, no more blue balling. We getting mm-hmm. it. Like this mm-hmm. is dope. I yeah. the the one for me when I think it was the year before this. Maybe it was 2014 when they did the Kingdom Hearts three. Reveal oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that had Sora and the Keyblade in the sand and stuff. Mm-hmm. That was we went through an entire generation of Kingdom Hearts spinoff games. Yeah, and it almost felt like it was never going to happen. Like, oh, they're, they're never going to do Kingdom Hearts three. It's just a spinoff. It's not a priority anymore. And then that trailer, man. I mean, we still had to wait another. <laughs> what was it like eight years or something yeah, after that? Yeah, we yeah, started yeah, a yeah, long time to wait. It was a while, yeah. <laughs> but at least we knew that it was coming. Uh, yeah. And that was. That was like, yeah, the magical moment for me was whew. King Marts 4 hit kind of different, though. It was not as exciting <laughs> for me. Four? But, sure. Four. Oh, we, we don't need to get into that. <laughs> it's neither here nor there. We'll talk about King Marts 4. You, dude, now that Brad's here it's and King Marts 4 is coming, it, yeah. the LSM we, fans are not yeah, ready. It's we're going to get jumped by you for this duo. Yeah, it's <laughs> not ready. Dude. Get ready. I'm probably more aggressive than Dustin, so get fucking ready. That's ready, dude. <laughs> I love it, though. I love it. All right. Next game on the list is Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. I'm so jealous that I have not played this yet, Cog. I've played through every single Yakuza game. I know. And this one is just waiting near. And hear me out here, Cog. This is what I'm extra hyped about. This my good friend, Mike Huber, who's been with the Yakuza series since the PS2 originals, dude. Wow. Okay. OG. He experienced burnout with the series. He was getting not super interested in this. When this game got announced, me and him were talking. We're like, dude, they just had Gaiden. And like, it just feels like they got a yearly thing. It's the MCU of (laughs) gaming. He loved this game. Loved it. It it felt like it almost made him fall in love with the series again. Ooh. So, Cog, yeah. I gotta hear your thoughts, man. Now that you have completed it, also, yeah. yeah, let's get into it, dude. Yeah, man. It was man. This is this is an interesting one because they're really the, the undertaking that they're trying to do with with obviously an iconic character, you know, saying with Kiryu and then obviously the new, the new kid on the block with Ichiban and obviously the direction change, right? Since the, the original Like a Dragon going into turn base and, and, and doing that. So what the, off the bat, the first thing that I, I have to give this game credit for is combat. I, I re, as a turn based guy, you know, the, the cool things I like is the way they've added little subtleties to the original game in terms of positioning in terms of doing extra damage. And then for Kiryu fans, him fighting like almost a traditional style of the older games so that they, those guys are not forced to do turn base. He can move around. He can go into these grapple styles. He could go into a quick attack style. So that that was the first thing I noticed up the box. Second, we talked about with uh, Final Fantasy VII is in terms of some of the most, the best side quests, the most hilarious stuff you're ever going to see. So... It, it goes from these very touching moments where it's emotional and it's high charge and it's energy. And then it's like the most goofy thing. You're on a trolley taking this thing called sicko snap of people. I'm like, what is happening in this game? Like this game is crazy. I will say what makes it refreshing. I have to say that the whole backdrop of Hawaii. Yeah. Is refreshing. Definitely. It's fun. It's goofy. I spoke to Gene. He's like, bro, Hawaii is like this. Like they have mini games with social media where you walk into people and you, aloha. And then they, you become friends with random NPCs. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So you got that. Um, the summons, the turn-based combat com- I already talked about. But again, rewarding you for the kind of things that you do. The other thing, which is, again, not to get too spoilery, but it's two games in one. The game still has a lot going on in Japan. There's a lot. And the the way they handle that is interesting. Some parts you can tell it's a lot of stitching to get these stories together. So some parts, you there's a, there's a few parts you got to suspend disbelief because it's one of those things the way in a game where you go, 
all right, this technically is an urgent situation, but I'm gonna go over here and do this. <laughs> you know, kind of, you, you <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, on certain things. But as it goes on, without, without spoiling too much, you know, there's really, I would say, an, a, a tremendous amount of reverence and respect for the Kiryu character and the memories and the things that he's going through. You got that. And then it's also a little bit of Ichiban's coming of age. And last point I'll say is that this is when I knew the game was really great. I had my pre notion of who the characters I was going to pick from the past games. Cause some of a lot of them were returning. Mm-hmm. The new characters are so well written and so funny and hilarious to me. That I'm like, I don't know if I could get rid of, <laughs> you know, Chitose and Thomas, T- 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 like they are really good. They, they, they're some of them. They're flawed, but they're really well done and, and believable. So, yeah, I would say highly recommend it. It came together well. Um, ending, I will just say that for for one and uh, for a protagonist that I felt got a nice, clear vision about the direction. For another, I'm like, damn, you could have gave me a little more. Like, mm. I just, you know, I just, just a little bit more. I just felt like there was some unanswered things. That's my only nitpick on an otherwise great game. But I got so much I could go on with it. The last thing, okay, one of the last things was part is funny. Yeah, yeah. This, this part is the game where I really fell in love with it. Like, as a person who grew up in New York, very urban environment, right? The game always tends to tell you, okay, those enemies are strong. If you see guys walking around with purple and a crown on their head, stay away. Like there's some neighborhoods where the threat level is telling you and you can like you can try to challenge. (laughs) You get destroyed. But it's one of the satisfying things of grinding and then coming back and then the rewards you get for beating those type of enemies. So it really creates this fear, tension. You're in a bad neighborhood. You're in a tough town or certain areas. And then the enemy reactions are really cool because I've seen things (laughs) where guys are in a car circling the block looking for you. <laughs> like, so this is some real urban street. Oh, you you feel like, oh, God, it's that. <laughs> and you, you're running away from enemies sometimes. It's that kind of energy. And I love the way they did that, that the difficulty, they make you grind for a reason. And I like that it added more challenge than the first game. So that's, that's my top level thoughts of it. Nice. Um, well, you said the the ending cog about like, being satisfied with one of them and wanting a little more from the other. I'm like, yeah, that's most Yakuza games. When I think about it, I think about six particularly in that way, or I'm like, Hmm, I thought that was a pretty good ending, but okay. Keep it going. I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So For man, sure. um, in Japan also, I actually didn't really know a lot about that. I assumed there would be some, but I didn't know it'd be that much. Which part of Japan is it? Is it Yokohama? So you- you do a Yokohama, you're doing in Jincho again, but you're okay. doing um what's uh I always forget the name. I'm butchering the name right now. Where um Osaka? No, where, Ka- where Kiryu is originally from the um oh why am I blanking? It's in Jincho, I think is where Ichiban is from. But then there's the other Kamurocho? Yes, Kamarocho, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Kamarocho comes back too. Yeah, so okay. you, you get and you yeah, get it to, always does, dude. It oh, always oh, yeah. finds a way. <laughs> you, you, you will get back there. But again, the way I will give them this, the way they did it, they have these things, it's called almost like these memories, these reminisce spots. Mm-hmm. And it's a love letter to past Yakuza games and cool. past experiences that Kiryu's been through. And you will get some returning favorites, some cool, you know, advancements on what other characters are doing. And it's just a nobility to the way they've handled it. I, I really feel, you know, a love letter to Kiryu on some, on some it's just really well done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For you, you're going to get certain parts. You'll be like, oh, like you're going to see what they do with certain things. And you're like, okay, I get it. Some things they're going to be like, okay, this was a silly thing that we're referencing to maybe a non-canon thing with him, which Mm -hmm. is kind of interesting. They they Mm -hmm. take different approaches, but I felt they were all well done. Yeah. It's funny. You talk about like uh, the tone of these games. Dude, I don't know how they do it. They're actual masters at weaving the tone in these games because it is so serious at times and so like violent but then it, there's like an old man in a diaper dancing around it's just like crazy the tones in these games that they somehow it works every time and i don't know how they do it they are so mm-hmm. masters of their craft in that sense oh, yeah th- there's one thing i was playing where 
literally, I'm like, all right, y'all jump in the shark now. Y'all doing too much. Like, this is great. But I'm like, all right, but this, this is kind of fun, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, music. Oh, oh excellent. Some of this music is really amazing. I, I got the soundtrack for that. Um, yeah, man. Some of these tunes are, are just jamming, bro. You, you, they, they knocked it out the park again with this soundtrack as well. So, yeah, salute to them on that. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Cog, is there, I think back to Yakuza Zero, the Park the Racers, I think back to that, how much time I spent doing that. Just got addicted to beating 10 year olds in that game. Is there a new thing like that in this game? Bro. Where you're just like, I can't get enough of this. Sujimon, my life was over. Oh, Bro, this Pac Pokemon ripoff thing that they got in there. That's like oh, turn no. based and you collect the card. Then you literally, so you'll fight enemies. And then at the end of the real fight in real time, when you're playing the game, they have the option to be recruited as Sujimon characters as part of your deck. <laughs> then, you, <laughs> then you gotta get gifts, you gotta try to woo them to your side. It's like a, a set of three um in the front and then three in the back. You have like six characters total, they have elements, and it's a turn-based mini game that is so addicting. Like I li- I think I got every trope, every achievement in this thing. Like I, I I was like, I am going to be the Suji Mom Master to the point where also I even talk about the job system where right. you can actually, if you play that mode, you can unlock a Sujimon job for uh, Ichiban. That's really cool. Where he's like a summoner of the characters and you can bring them in again. It's ridiculous. So that's awesome. Yeah, I forgot about that aspect, which is the um you know, the job system is really cool. You can really change the identity of a lot of these characters. Um, they all have different weapons and stuff. The only thing I would say is annoying is that the weapons that you need are required for certain jobs are very obscure to find and like mm-hmm. where to get them and then to level them up. Once you learn the crafting system, it's very rewarding, but I don't feel it's well explained <laughs> kind it. of thing. So I had to do a little research out when I'm like, oh, I got to cheat. Like, where, where do I get this weapon to unlock to, to be able to power up this character and stuff like that? But they, they have fun with it. You know, some mm-hmm. of them you got chef, samurai, you know, <laughs> r- ridiculous thing. You could be a surfer and, and he's got his own different abilities. I think um, Chitose with the with the dancing and mm-hmm. one guy's a taxi driver. <laughs> like it's, it's absolutely, like one of his summons is he's like the Uber from hell where he locks you in the back of the car. They show you driving the enemy and they got the enemies you know really input yeah. into including bosses they literally put their npc you know their character models inside all of these summons it's it's ridiculous i'm telling that's you right awesome. now game's awesome <laughs> that's so cool do they have um i forgot if they have ichiban like hero class again yes, like his dragon classic. quest character classic yeah Hell he's got yeah. healing abilities he's Love got that. um con- he's like the the cheerleader, come on, guys, raise the defense up, got abilities like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's really cool. I would say, like, the, 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 his base class is more than enough to just go through the entire game. You don't necessarily yeah. have to switch with him. I thought yeah. so, too, in the first one, or in yeah. seven. Yeah, and I, I feel with um, Kiryu, I felt it was sacrilegious to, to change him. I was like, I'm leaving classic <laughs> Kiryu. Yeah. With his, and he's got, like, three different fighting styles in his base form, so I was like, I'm going to leave him the way he is. But other people, I had fun with him. Uh, I'm trying to remember seven had mm-hmm. kind of like an underground dungeon. I'm trying yes. to remember. Is oh, there yes. something like that in eight? Oh yeah. The dungeons return and the rewards are plentiful. You okay. get to save. Yeah. You get to save people down there. You're able to get to grind certain enemy. I mean, certain things to, to help with your crafting towards certain weapons. They do have, like I said, the crafting is a little weird instead of just getting a weapon and then leveling up or investing money in it, sometimes they also want you to get like a random item that is necessary to upgrade. They'd be like, you need a shark fin. I'm like, what the hell I get a shark fin and to upgrade <laughs> this weapon? Then it's like, you got to right. do the fishing mini game or whatever. Or you do the dungeon and get to the level, you know, whatever kind of thing. So that part is a little <laughs> annoying. But I will say, yeah, to your original question, the dungeons are really are back in different areas, you know, and they're re- challenging, but it, you get to test your build. You get to see how good mm-hmm. your team synergy really is. And I highly advise people do the drink link system, the bonds, because what happens is when you're fighting with these characters, if they're bonded, well, you knock an enemy down, you know, Kiri will come and then kick the enemy while for extra damage, or you got these tag team abilities, which is kind of similar to the synergy in mm-hmm. Final Fantasy Rebirth, where, they have these unique, powerful attacks that don't necessarily take your magic points. And then the whole push-pull with 
doing regular attacks to get your magic energy back in real time during the fight. So it's these cool little, I, I just love the combat. They really mm-hmm. have taken JRPG turn base, made it cinematic, made it fun. And of course, the classic dialing pound mates and getting ridiculous <laughs> yeah. people to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the summons. Oh, you got pizza delivery guys working for you. Got all type of foolishness happening when you call and spend for these things. So, again, it, it is it is worth the ride. It is that they they definitely did this thing with Infinite Wealth. Dustin, yes, what's going on with you in these games? I'm feeling the call. Okay, just, it's it's busy right now. It's and it's been yeah, busy it's, all it's busy. year. Yeah, it's busy times. But after. Let's see. After Rebirth, uh, let's see. I'm going to play Stellar Blade, maybe Dragon's Dogma 2. Maybe. Yeah, we'll see. I'm not sold yet. We'll see. Dude, all right. Let's wait and see. I'll carry the torch. I got to be honest. I have tried to play the first one many times, and I don't. I don't. I'm not saying it's bad, but. Oh, it's it's, Jank. It's it's Jank. It's Jank. Everyone who loves that game acknowledges it's Jank. Yeah. So we'll see. If. I'm not opposed to playing it. I want to see how reviews are. All right. Get a feel for it, but I'm not locked in. But as far as uh, Yakuza, I have played a decent amount of zero and I've played some of seven, but I always, it's my fault. I always tried to play them at inopportune times when I couldn't get fully invested. And it's, I mean, this has been clear to me for a very long time. So it wasn't just infinite wealth that, kicked me into gear that's like yo you gotta do this it's been that way but infinite wealth is kind of the nail in the coffin that's like yeah it's time i am not totally sure how i'm gonna approach it because there's part of me that's like dude start with zero go through at least (laughs) some of the earlier ones it's a lot Uh, it feels like a little wishful thinking for me to do that so i might just start with uh like a dragon because i already have it and I know I know some of the backstory, but not all of it. So and then, you know, I can play that game and I can always go back. It's always there for me. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's going to happen this year. In fact, hopefully sooner rather than later after Rebirth might cool. be the time to start fitting that in. But honestly, the other thing that really made me realize, like, yeah, I got to play these games is going to Japan and realizing mm-hmm. I was like, man, the the bit of Yakuza that I played because we stayed in Shinjuku, which is what oh. Kamarucho is modeled after. I have a photo of me at the gate thing, the <sighs> iconic, the iconic like uh, red gate. So I was like, man, I feel like I have so many touchstones to Japan just from playing some of Zero and some of Like a Dragon. So I got to do it, dude. Uh, what is it? In one of them, Gene and I talked about this. You can go to Don Quixote. Yeah, uh, the, a lot of them have Don Quixote. And they play the Don Quixote song, Mm -hmm. which is awesome. So I got to do it. Everything about Infinite Wealth sounds amazing. And uh, I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for me, but I'm also going to do it for Cobb. I'm going to do it for you, Cobb. I appreciate you, man. You need that, Eli, especially because you've been. So it's going to hit. For you, it's going to hit special because, again, you're going to have these iconic places. And I love for Gene as a person who grew up, he grew up in Hawaii Mm -hmm. for that. So he's like, that is just awesome. So I'm dying to know, you know, your feel and the authenticity of how things are depicted because it's going to hit different because you've been there. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait. I just, uh, man, this the early part of this year has been crazy, but I Mm -hmm. think summer is going to be okay. But here's the thing, Brad. If I'm playing Yakuza, I think Final Fantasy 14. It's gonna have to keep waiting. But the expansion's coming up, dude. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> fuck, fuck your expansion. You say that. Like you say that. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll be there. Was it you? Someone's like, yo, it's gonna be like One Piece. It's pirates. No. Well, it's like yeah, on an, ish- uh, an island. It seems like with adventure is like a big theme to it. Yeah, it, it's not unappealing to me. But it's not. We just got to get you over the realm of born hump. Then you'll be in. Mm, you'll be in. Mm. We'll just okay. do. I'll play with you, man. It'll be a good time. It'll be more fun with the friend. I, I, I will help starts. guide you through the game. If you, can people... get, if you can get new releases to slow down for about six months. Yes, I can. Then I'll do it. You well, can it you like talk, talk to Mr. When Sony. When, when you're talking about skipping Dragon's Dogma 2. 
some blasphemy. It's like I didn't say I was going to skip it. Okay, I didn't say I was going to. I just said I'm not hype. You didn't give me the guaranteed hype. I'm in. (laughs) You feel the vote of confidence? (laughs) Yeah, I did not. I was shocked and disappointed. Wow, this hurts. Uh, But I guess it hurts you more more than me. Yeah, it hurts me more. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, Yo, Cog, what the hell is Maddie's deal with Ichiban? He's just a hater. You know, look, I get it. Old guy, you know, you, you 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 grew up with what you like, and you know, you get a little upset when they go in different directions. So I just, you know, have to bring the harsh realities to my boy. And I'm like, this the series needed a refresh. We love Kiryu. Mm. First, no yeah. Kiryu disrespect. Like, I, I, that chamber, me and him, is over. I have so much respect, especially actually, um, if, um, um, if Dustin, if you're gonna do it, and you start with seven, you do like a mm-hmm. dragon. There is a part of me that says you should do the man who erases name because it's mm. right. It's the story. It it's not. To it it right. leads right into infinite wealth. It's not too long. No, and it true. has a lot of the classic modernized version of the fighting of the classic um, Yakuza right, games yeah. with Kiryu. And I, I thought they did it well enough job. I'm like, okay, they modernize it. This is. This is doable. This is serviceable. Still have my issues with the camera and the lock on. <laughs> ability, but that's another thing. But um, I will to to Maddie's point. He, you know how like you guys have your gaming schedules, right? right. You're like yo, I'm gonna not right now. It's all rebirth time. So it would be the equivalent of me, Brad, telling you in the middle of rebirth, yeah, you're, you're, you're loving it. You don't want to do anything else but go back to this game. And I'm like, hey, you got to play. And the community is bullying you. You no. didn't do this. <laughs> Cog played your game. He played your dang and robber. You didn't play his game. It's not fair. So they're killing Ellis. They're killing him in the comments. Undefined dude, right? So now you got to begrudgingly go away from your love. Because I think he was playing Tales. One of them games he was playing, right? Tales of Arise? Come on, man. Not Arise. Not- what, it's the other Trails. Uh- What's that? Oh, game? Trails game? game? No, trails. Yeah, the one that has like mad. Oh, Trails. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Trails. Yeah. So okay. he's playing he's in his Trails, you know, bag. He's doing his, you know, retro stuff. And they pull him away. They bully him. So, <laughs> they so you know when you pulled away from something you love, you coming in with negative energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I, gotta I don't like this guy. He's a, he's a goof and he's a simp. And I'm like, but that's the joy. That's what he is. You know, that kind of thing. So I get it. <laughs> I think now we're in a better place. Okay. Schedule-wise, he's going to play with a clear head. He's going to come in there. He's going to okay. give this game its due. But yeah, I think we, we're good now. We're good now. But yeah, he, he was hating. He was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, to, his credit, to his credit I will give him this though there's one thing he pointed out that Like a Dragon does that I had to admit was an annoying mechanic there's a part uh-huh. when you get to it that you will experience this where the game says okay you at this chapter you cannot advance any further until you have a certain monetary amount right and it's a hard that. stop and if you haven't if you're a person that haven't grinded I could see how that could be frustrating, but you know, with me in these games, I do grind. Like our Final Fantasy, we go to open world, we, we look at different things on the map, and we we kind of get that. But if you were and you were just trying to beeline, it is a bit aggressive yeah, what they did. Sounds like <laughs> he was rushing through, not not taking time to smell the roses in the game. He was just running past everything. Exactly. I know what happened. I know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll rematch it with Infinite Wealth, though. Yeah, we'll get him one day. Like. Kiryu is obviously the great. He's the goat, you know, without a doubt. He is the goat. So no one, in my opinion, will ever live up to Kiryu. Maybe Majima also. Mm-hmm. But like Ichiban's great. I like Ichiban a lot. Ichiban's awesome. I think he's great. Yeah. I like that he's super different. Yes. I think that's important. Yeah. You know, the, the relationship between those characters and Infinite Wealth. I don't want to spoil too much. There's a lot. There's yeah, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Let's talk about. Um, whoop, that's the wrong tab. Uh, we're going to talk about Pacific Drive, which I've been playing a little bit of. I played a couple hours of this game yesterday, so I'm not like extremely deep. You know, it's rebirth mm-hmm. time right now. So so the main focus is, but I was like, yo, I'm curious about this game. Let's give it a spin. I like I like Craftal survival games. So I was like, yeah, I'm down. So this game, Pacific Drive, takes place in the Pacific Northwest. Totally seems nice trees, all that good stuff. The weather, rain, lots of that going on. 
But the game opens up with you just kind of driving in this car and there is this zone out there that is like restricted off like a huge wall, like some government thing was going on down there. So people aren't allowed in. You are driving this car. You get transported into this world or on the other side of the wall or it's like a world or whatever. I'm not exactly sure what it is yet, but you are here. Your car is gone. The whole point of the game is your car. That is like the main thing for you. It's the car. So pretty much, yeah, you get to this world. um, You're walking through it. You find a car. But what's cool is you start hearing these voices talking about like about you. And it sounds like they are coming from a car radio. So there are these other entities or people trapped in here also. But I don't really know a lot about them yet. One of them begrudgingly decides to help you and is like, here, you can use my car in my garage. So the whole loop of the game is you have this home base. It's like a car garage, which is very, it gets kind of comfy as things go on. I'd say like, I'm very much more attached than I was originally, but you got your car here. You can uh, do maintenance on the car. You know, you're fixing tires, you're filling up gas there. If you need to some free things for the car to help you go on your journey. Cause like the gas, like when you're out driving in the world, you need gas. And if you're out of gas, so you, you got to siphon gas from someone or something like that. So they give you some nice perks like that and some lockers you can hold stuff in. But pretty much, yeah, you have this really beat down car now, right now. So they all got like health points and stuff like that. So you get in your car and you go out on these runs. And what's kind of cool about it is when you're in your car, you like have to look at the key thing and turn the key. Then you got to put it in drive and stuff like that. You got to remember to do that. Oh, okay. So then like, because if you stop your car and you just get out and you forgot to put on like the brake or something like that, it may start rolling away from you and all that good stuff. (laughs) So you're like, oh, my car. But uh, out in this world, I'm still pretty early and I've only gone a couple runs, but you have like a map back your home base and this woman character is kind of instructing you how to get out of this whole area you're in. And you pick a location you want to drive to on a map. And as you dr- get to these locations, more things become unlocked as you grow. You, like, you get to like point A, then point B will be later on down the line. Or she'll be like, hey, you got to go to this specific point. So then you got to like make your way over there. But when you're out in these worlds, yeah, it's very woodsy, kind of dark, foggy and all that stuff. There's weather effects. There's calm weather but sometimes it starts raining really crazy and stormy so you got to use like your windshield wipers and all that stuff all those like just kind of car things that get you into the car simulation i would say Mm -hmm. you know if you're driving on wet road your car's kind of not as good swerving around a little bit like that but you're out in the world your car can get totally messed up you can get flat tires well this is Uh, the car simulation window get busted yeah windows get busted all that good stuff. But luckily you do crafting. It's a crafting game. So you're making new stuff for your car. So like, I have a little like uh, a crafting station, in the back trunk. It's like a station wagon in your car. So you got a nice uh, crafting bench there. So I'll, like, I'll craft a new plate or something like that for the side, like a new side uh, plate of the car. Flat tire. I'll make a little thing that'll pump up the tire, but it'll disappear, obviously, when you use it so much. Then you got like this little goo you can slap on to damaged parts of the car and it'll slowly heal it up a little bit so that's a huge part is like obviously going out in the world there's a bunch of houses or some like structures like that you go to go rummage through it get all your crafting stuff destroy stuff all that basic stuff but out in this world there's like weird anomalies kind of going on there's like weird flashes there's like one time i was driving around there was just a giant saw blade that came out of nowhere across the ground just going just Almost hit my whole car, dude. Just weird, yeah. freaky stuff like that. Lots of weird lights. You're scanning stuff, kind of just finding out more about the world. There's like a total, it's like a total mystery of you trying to figure out what's going on. Like I said, I'm still very early, so I don't know a whole ton of what's going on. But out in the world, there's also, I saw a couple like drones flying around, like big drones, and they attacked my car mm. and like latched onto it and was like ramming, like I lost control and I was hitting all this, taking all this damage. So I'm like, well, I got to have my car. So you got to make sure to monitor that. You got to be careful. I was also driving these weird, like black. I don't know what they, they looked like uh, some sea anemones or something like on the top of the car. And all my Mm. circuits were going crazy. Mm. And all that stuff. I had to like get out the car and to go 
grab them and like throw them away. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of freaking out. I was like, oh God, I didn't see anyone yet like a, a monster necessarily like chasing me or trying to kill me. You hear some weird stuff out there that could be like teasing stuff like that, like some something out there trying to kill you, I would say. But I haven't run anything like that. Um, but how you get out of each area. So you go on these runs, you got gas, you got resources you want to manage. So you don't want to be out there too long necessarily for everything. You got, but like I'm saying, if you run a gas or running low on gas, you have a little canister you can take with you to siphon gas from other cars. Other cars. Because mm-hmm. there's destroyed cars out there and stuff like that. So you can pick parts from it all that are destroy them and stuff like that for parts but how you get out of an area is there's these like little locations on the map like a yellow ball you have to go up to you have to get this ball and you have to take it to your car and you like put it in this computer thing and it it opens up like this gate this like big crazy looking yellow gate that's like shooting out of the sky and down on the floor so it's like a beacon almost so you can see everywhere and that's how you leave the area but when you do this the world starts to do like a uh, a battle royale, almost like circle closing in on you kind of thing. Okay. So they, mm. oh, you got to like get there quickly or you're not going to make it out alive. So it has a nice sense of tension that way. I'm really curious to see how more it'll evolve because it, they'll start adding things in slowly over time, like weird stuff. I assume every run, I think it's a cool premise. It does start kind of slow. It gives you a lot of tutorials kind of at the start teaching you stuff. So I feel like, that might be a, a turn off for some people because it's like, hey, learn about this. Now learn about this. Now learn about this. Now learn about this before you even go on like a normal run. But I think it has a really cool vibe. I like hearing like random things on the radio, like creepy things every now and then. The setting is very nice. I like the car garage I'm getting attached to just because it's like my home base now. Yeah. It's funny. There's this dumpster out there. It's like a, a special dumpster if you like interact with it once per time you come back, it'll like spit out materials for you, just random materials for you. So it's got some quirky things like that, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. I'm curious how things will go. I would like to keep going. Like I said, rebirth is the main focus mm-hmm. right now, though, but mm-hmm. I would definitely like to keep playing. Cause I like crafting games. Like I like Sonatica a lot and stuff like this. So I'm hoping it'll give me those same feelings as I continue on. Yeah. It seems like a vibe. Brad, where where are you playing and how's the performance? Because that's the one thing I'm trying to remember. Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy was, was having issues. I think he was trying to play on Steam Deck, though. Yes. But how's so, that going? I had a code for Epic Game Store, so I'm playing on there. And mm. it seems OK. It seems fine. And nothing like egregious right now. I don't know about Steam Deck. But yeah. it seems OK. You know, I'm not like blown away by performance, but it's fine. Yeah, it's getting the job done. Yeah, as long as it's not like stuttery or something. That's the that's the yeah. enemy. Enemy is stutter yeah, yeah, yeah. more stutter, than yeah, above yeah, all yeah. else. Yeah, yeah, stutter's yeah. not good. Um, I haven't noticed too much too much of it. I mean, it might be there. I just haven't seen it, which can definitely happen in the heat of moment. Things where I'm not even thinking about that stuff. But yeah, nice. Could be some stuff. Yes. So yes. be cautious. Yeah, I feel bad for this game because it, a lot of people were really interested in it and then it just it came out sandwiched yeah. between all these other games and Yep. That's the problem with all I mean there's it's great. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to complain about getting so many big awesome exciting games and follow-ups, but a lot of times these smaller games kind of get lost in the mix. So yeah. we'll have to see what happens with this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the grid. Uh Zeke the plumber wrote in Bodacious Brad, Long Dong Dustin, <laughs> wow, and Commander Cog. <laughs> I bought Pacific Drive when it came out, and I gotta say, I don't think I like it. This is probably a me problem, as I do as I do not entirely re, did not entirely realize what kind of game I was getting into. The atmosphere is great, the adventure aspect is solid, but I find the survival elements very frustrating and unforgiving seems almost intentionally lacking a number of quality of life features. What say you? I mean, it's hard for me to dispute a lot of your complaints because I'm still pretty early in the game. So these quality of life features, I'm not exactly sure yet what I'm what's missing. Like, I, I haven't been playing yet where I'm like, this game needs this right now to make it much better or anything like that. In terms of the survival elements... I don't think they're very frustrating for me. 
as I've played survival games before, it seems pretty standard. I would say like I'm not strapped for resources, but I do have to look for them, which I think is good. That's a good balance so far. But uh, yeah. We'll report back in the future when I play more, I suppose. Yeah. Get a better feel for it. Mm hmm. All right, boys. It is time for Sort It Out. This segment, we just talk about something in the game industry that needs sorting. Company, game, person, mm. whatever may come to your head. Yeah. And do either of you have one? Also, I, you don't need to have one. It's oh, totally fine if you don't. Optional. Ooh. Ooh. I have one because it's cool. ongoing, okay. very active. Okay. I'm trying to sort my thought outs before recording punching up tomorrow yes as the evergreen sorted out nintendo uh you know there's mm -hmm. all this stuff going on about them suing yuzu the creator of a switch emulator right and there's a lot of passionate takes out there you know and a lot of fieriness about whether you you know support it if you support Yuzu, then you support piracy and stealing from developers. If you support Nintendo, then you care about the soulless mega corporation. And I got to say that I'm I'm somewhere in the middle on this mm -hmm. right now. It's, it's very tough as I I care very much about the preservation of games. I love emulators. I use emulators. Um, I also care a lot about piracy and how that can affect game developers. And so I guess the sorted out is that I wish there could be like this happy medium where it's like, yeah, I want a switch emulator to exist, um, mm -hmm. but I don't want people to use it for pirating tears of the kingdom a, a million times before launch. You know, like yeah. I want, I want the sort, maybe there's a sorted out to the people that use it too. It's like, these are tools. You got to use it responsibly or else you're not going to, these tools are going to be <laughs> made illegal and that's right. bad. So I don't know. I guess there's a sorted all out all around here. Um, obviously, Nintendo super litigious and I get it, um, but they can also be bullies at the same time. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a lot to work through. I'm uh, I'm preparing and scared for, yeah. <laughs> for uh, <laughs> punching up just because no matter what I say or what we say in general will be made an enemy. But that's OK. You know, not we're just going to say what we think. And that's always how it's going to be. So sort it out emulation yeah. Nintendo. I, I feel like that's just the reality if you are a platform specific podcast yeah. oh yeah you're gonna catch Cog, some gonna catch Cog some understands heat. oh yeah. you know I know you yeah. know I know <laughs> <laughs> I got sorted out so uh, all the time <laughs> <laughs> based on uh, where things gonna go I was just literally I literally was gonna be mine like you know just just sort out what what what, what the messaging is gonna be <laughs> as far oh, as yeah. Uh, you know yeah for like, Xbox yeah. specifically yeah, just 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 sort it out. Just just I, I really don't care. You know, I'm not one of these people who are so emotionally invested. As long as mm -hmm. I can play the games I want to play on the platform I want to play it, which is my preferred platform, I'm fine, right? But I do understand, right? I do understand people like, yo, right. what are they doing? What is it this one? Is it that one? Is this game going? Is that I completely get it. So there's a part of me that's like, yeah, let, let, let's sort that out. Let, let's get more of a concise message on, you know, whether it's first party, whether it's the publisher games, ABK, is it Zenimax games only, you know, because we, we do see the, I'll say lack of consistency, but I could understand the confusion on that. that yeah, because I guess if they don't cog, they're going to get that question forever is, is this coming to PlayStation or game. something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every single game now has the question mark. And that's the part that's unfortunate because people, it, we, we lose the conversation about the game itself, about where it's going to go. Right. How long is it going to go? Before yeah, that's over. true. Mm -hmm. Damn. Uh, Dustin, you brought up Nintendo, so I'm going to give them my sorted out as usual. Uh, where the hell is Twilight Princess and Wind Waker HD on Switch? Mm. Come on, man. Like, how many years do I got to complain about this? You got, like, all of them. You have so many Zelda games on Switch, but not Wind Waker or Twilight Princess. Please put those on there for God's sakes. Or at this point, just save them for the next console. All right. Get those games on there. Sick of this shit. Yeah. <laughs> Nintendo, they don't care about their library. Clearly. I know. They don't. Uh, do what they want to do. Brad, is a second sorted out legal mm -hmm. on this podcast? Is that legal? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I gotta, Hold I gotta, this is real complainer shit. That's about All that. All right, let's go. Get to it. Uh, Sony, you're charging $200 for the DualSense Edge. It's a premium controller. <laughs> I have one. I love it. I think it's a fantastic controller. But what were you thinking with the battery life? What Ooh. were you thinking? Yeah. Uh, and I get it. You know, I've def- I defended the Portal's battery life because I said, you just charge it up. It's okay. And with the DualSense Edge, particularly now with Persona 3 and going into Final Fantasy, I don't want to have to babysit my controller all the time. It's like, oh, when you're done, you always got to go over and charge it every time. If you don't charge it every time, good luck. Because, and yeah. I get it. I'm the type of person sometimes I'm like, I got to pause my game. I got to go do something. I got to go get an edit together or whatever. And I should turn it off or something. But again, it comes back to that babysitting. $200 yeah. controller. And the battery life is just ass. It's it's ridiculous. I the I gotta say Xbox with the Elite controller, way better overall mm-hmm. and cheaper. You guys got clowned on cheaper. with yeah. that, and you should have been able to beat them because you released way after. That is true. Yeah. So, and here's the thing: it's not fixable. Like they can wow. release a Dual Sense Edge too, I guess, and then people can stupidly like myself spend another two hundred dollars <laughs> on one but yeah it's just insane to me you release a more premium controller which is great i love that and then you have it have less battery life yeah Ugh, it's tough. like there should be yeah. no there should be no negative points on a two hundred dollar controller yeah, versus your standard that. controller just period so that's my sorted yeah, out i've just I been feeling that. that pain with all these games lately oh dude that's a yeah that's a really good one especially because you use it all the time. I only mm. use mine with certain games, mm. like from software games and stuff like that. Yeah. But do you have the charge in dock? I do. Yeah. Okay. And it's funny because <laughs> it should be so easy. I have it pretty close. It's not that hard. It's just I don't I don't always think about it. Sometimes it's like late Ooh. at night. I, I'm like, OK, time to wrap up. Got to head upstairs, go to bed. And so I don't even think about turning it on and then the next day i'll get an hour into playing and i'll get that alert oh low battery it's like ah, yeah that's frustrating damn, come that's on frustrating. man yeah that's ridiculous tough. yeah i like the xbox one that because i like that they have like the rubber on it too mm-hmm. i always really liked that i wish the dual sense edge yeah, had that. mine here my uh hey, i bought this yeah, to play a lot classic. of halo infinite and then the which oh, is a lot better now yes uh, but then i was like man i guess halo infinite wasn't it but uh, yeah the zeitgeist dude, this, is gone now that i'm just holding it it's nice the build this is a nice controller guys the yeah the elite, it is a nice controller yeah elite, it's very nice it's it's so good uh and it has mm-hmm. good ba- it has good battery life <laughs> yeah so it does. yeah the dual sense controllers have not great battery life that's true yeah i feel like when i played tears of the kingdom my controller lasted the entire time i think oh wow <laughs> yeah it, dude, like, it, it was like insane yeah. yeah man that uh i've had the same pro controller for switch since launch day or Damn, shortly nice. after launch same. same one and the battery life lasts for weeks yeah Damn. it's insane how good that battery life is on that controller yeah, yeah. right i did get joy con drift on that controller though my first oh. pro one so there goes that it happens mm. It happens. Unfortunately, it is a common problem. Does that happen? To Xbox controllers, though? I don't think I've ever heard about it on an Xbox controller. I've, I've seen it. It, it, it. it can happen. It's not like super frequent, but I've seen it before. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's hear some sorted outs from the audience. This is from Redhead Redemption. Hey, summoning dudes. I got to sort it out for you. I know it's probably a little late, but sorted out Xbox and their inability to say anything before it's leaked ahead of time, either inten- intentionally or not. I am willing to bet money on the next time we hear something big about Xbox. It'll be like one of those Twitter. Fuck it. Here's the entirety of Xbox's thoughts, plans and wishes. Take care and keep gooning to the found- founding fathers with Colin. Oh, boy, we're not doing that. That's uh, that's a Colin exclusive. Colin, <laughs> Colin exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what you're talking about, Cog. Just like the yeah. messaging, just yeah. getting out there. Yeah, the problem is they got too many snitches. They got way. Uh, yeah, too they many got s- some leaks. Oh, they got bro. a plug. 
everybody telling everybody business. Like it, you don't really it, it see that with PlayStation a lot. Like no. you get nothing. Like we get to see whole. I mean, part of it with Xbox themselves, they leak their whole next generation plans on the, <laughs> yeah. the FTC damn yeah, site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, bro, like you leaked your own thing. Like yeah, it's it comes with it. T- well, I will say this: covering the platform is always something to talk about. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> That's the beauty of it from a content creation standpoint, but from a yeah new standpoint, then they always have to now get in front of it, get their messaging together based on what leaked and kind of mm-hmm. say what's true and what's not true. So yeah, it is a loop with them. Way, way too many stitches in the building. It's like um, Colin said when he covered PlayStation 3 Sony era, it was so much fun for him to do that because it was just a, a mess everywhere. Does it kind of feel like that for you right now? Exciting? I mean... They're doing good stuff, obviously. I mm-hmm. wouldn't say it was as bad as the PS3 right. era, but right. there's I some think, some things coming out that shouldn't be coming out. Yeah, it's it's uneven. They, it's like being a fan of a of a sports team that you know ultimately they gonna find a way to, to mess something up sometimes. <laughs> Even after, like they can win, they can just always. It's always. It's never. You never get a, a long string of consistent positive mm. news. You, even when it's the the ultimate W, like, all right, they're going to find a way still to do something stupid, and yeah. then we're going to have to talk about it, even, even in the W. <laughs> you know, so, gotta do. so that's what it is with them <laughs> like that. It just it comes with the territory, man. You're just like, man, 2024 going to be an amazing year. You got 10 yeah. games coming man, out. You got yes. all this stuff, Hellblade, and it's like, ah, oh, now this. And I gotta, yeah. That's what it is covering the Xbox platform sometimes. Uh, Hellblade's pretty close, right? Yeah, it's May. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It, what what day is it? Like May twenty first or I something? Think it's in the twenties. I think if I just yeah, if I if I recall. Oh, it's like Very curious days. about that game. I wasn't yes. a big fan of the first one, Ooh. but of course I'll try the second one. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it looks fantastic. Visually, oh, yeah. it looks insane. Yeah, so, I, I would, definitely the first, curious. Yeah, first one was great to me. It was flawed. It had some issues. The puzzle was a little you know, annoying, but I, I just love the way they deal with psychosis and, and the voices. Oh yeah. And, I'm uh, the outlier on this one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm I the minority it. on this. No, I get it. Some people can't deal with it though. Some people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's okay. So I'm curious to see how much of a, how much changes and improvements they've mm-hmm. done with the next one. But from a, yeah, from a graphical fidelity standpoint, God damn, I get it. Yeah. It's going to be a beautiful. nice showpiece for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Greg Hanley wrote in greeting summoners. I have a sorted out this week. Which is the constant regression in game, UI, and menu design. Not only are menus becoming impossible to navigate with multiple overlaid layers, tabs, and submenus, but I've noticed a rise in games when opening an inventory slash map screen takes seconds due to the over-designed and overly interactive maps and menus that must be loaded up, sorted out. I have found myself avoiding opening inventories, maps, and menus in some games at all costs now. Keep it up, Brad. The show is fantastic, and we are so grateful to have you here with LSM. Greetings from Ireland. Thank you. Uh, yeah, some some game UIs, uh, you know, a little messy, I would say. I saw some of Suicide Squads, and I was like, ooh, I don't know about that. I don't know if that's really good. But uh, yeah, nothing is more underrated to me than just a really clean UI, really clean, simplistic UIs. Usually a good thing. Some games have crazy UI and they do it really well, though, is like the Persona games. The UI in those games are insane, but they work really well. They're very stylish and all that. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Persona, uh, I guess I'll say it now. We're going to talk about it in a bit. Mm-hmm. They are, their UI is so good, but sometimes they have such glaringly obvious problems. Well, mm-hmm. in this, I'm thinking of one particular thing in Persona 3 Reload where uh, in your normal main menu, you can go to your personas and you can release them. If you don't have any mm-hmm. availability or if you want to open up a slot, if you go to the velvet room and you want to summon a persona. They'll say, hey, you're full. You can't summon one right now. You cannot release a persona from the velvet room menu as far as i understand oh yeah so you have to you have to leave go through the animation of leaving go to your menu release it and then go back in go through the same animation it's so annoying like why did no one think of this Mm -hmm. so quality life stuff too i mean i guess that's not really ui but it feels ui related because i'm doing stuff Mm -hmm. in the menus yeah yeah i agree definitely yeah my my only add-on was to greg's point the 
when some of them get too complex in that that loading time, that three to like four or five seconds to to get, mm-hmm. it just interrupts the flow. And sometimes it, it does. It, yeah, it makes you not want to, you know, you want to do it later because it's so cumbersome and so so uh, you know obtrusive, intrusive with it. So yeah, I I feel like things are getting a little too busy and overly complicated. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is from Kyle Son. Hello, Rebirth Squad. One out of many to come. This will be my last submission for a while, so I'm going out with a bang. I would like to send a huge sorted out to PlayStation. Although we've had mostly con- consistent releases this generation, I found their, this leadership, team, Ryan, Holst, etc. to be devoid of a strong creative vision. Ever since the start of 2021, we've been subject to bad PR cycle after bad PR cycle so much that it's gradually worn down the goodwill and patience of even the most devoted PlayStation fans. They rarely have spoken to us when they've had some good things to say or good news, always disclose the bad and been slow to correct systemic hardware slash slash software slash PR issues that were self-inflicted. They've spend or spread themselves thin with hardware and software limitations or initiatives and as a result, been unable to excel at large number of them. And most importantly, they've stepped up some of their most prolific production and creative staff for failure in lieu of the almighty bottom line. I can only hope that this latest round of layoffs and shift in production pipeline is a signal to the fan base that they are resorting to the vision or yeah, resorting to their vision of what the, uh, the Trenton slash house slash Yoshida era I would like to say a huge good riddance to Jim Ryan and his put your head down and work and his don't speak your core audience mentality. Hopefully the next CEO has a vision that all enjoyers of the medium can be proud of. Thanks for hearing me out, Kyle. So Dustin, what do you think about a lot of this? Uh, Not going on here. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm I'm very mixed on some of this because I'm I'm in agreement in some and other parts. I'm I'm mm-hmm. not mainly in that I'm in agreement that I think that creative Sony is kind of dead right now, and they're not very ambitious, which I don't really like. And you're right that so much is in pursuit of um, doing safe stuff that makes money. Um, obviously, now they're having a problem particularly with their profitability being very low. So they're trying mm-hmm. to get that sorted out. So I don't like that. And, and I agree. And, you know, the live service initiative, while I think well-intentioned and smart from a business perspective, hasn't always worked out. There's been a lot of misguided steps along the way. Mm-hmm. So I get that. Um, at the same time, though, uh, you, I'm trying to remember the exact line here about how even the most uh, wait worn down the goodwill and patience of even the most devoted PlayStation fan. I don't know if that's necessarily true because I think that the people that really, really care about first party, I get it. Mm-hmm. You're, you're wanting more right now, but they have continued to provide good stuff on PlayStation five throughout this whole time. And it's like this year, it's like, yeah, there might not be first party, but they locked in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, um, Stellar Blade, which we'll see, Rise of the Ronin. And Grand so, Blue, Helldivers. Yeah. Helldivers. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's been a lot of awesome stuff. And yeah, I know no one likes the exclusive game of like, oh, well, they're just paying to have stuff. I get that. But mm-hmm. as a PlayStation user, I don't feel like they're lacking in terms of providing content to their customers. I think that they've been and and the sales of PS5 have been amazing so far, despite yeah. that lack of content. So I guess that's more of a, a business mindset. But I already outlined uh, laid out the, the creative aspect, which I think kind of sucks mm-hmm. right now, for sure. So it's 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 a mixed bag right now with PlayStation. But. A lot of that is just from our fan perspective, because from the sales perspective of the PS5, none of that has mattered. Um, It's been doing very, 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 very well. Um, So we'll see what happens now, particularly as Hiroki Totoki, who I've I've nicknamed the cleaner coming in. Oh, shit. Um, He's coming around to clean house (laughs) and 
who knows? We don't. We I don't know if it's going to be good or bad. Um, it could be really bad. Uh, mm-hmm. if if it's really goes in and and makes some cuts and and there's a, a loss on on quality, that would be the biggest thing. But who knows? It could be necessary as well. We're just this is one thing that I think that we gotta kind of wait and see what happens because we don't really know. Uh, it, some of these changes could be good. Um, I, for me, the main thing that I would like to see if he made a change is that PlayStation first party games become shorter because Ooh. I think a lot of their first party games have been way bigger and more bloated than necessary. Mm. So if they can, if that's the cut is shorter games. Good. I like that. Make it a more streamlined experience. I know people love to talk about, uh, oh yeah, sixty hours. It's like, dude, I don't need that, that was, anymore. No, that I love really sixty-hour cool. games. I just played Persona, and it was sixty hours. And we're playing Rebirth, and that's long. I get that, but not every game needs to be that. Right. No. Sure. No, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think every game needs to be that long. Right. Yeah, don't, you? don't compromise my Ghost of Tsushima sequel, ah, though. Mm-hmm. If you got one coming, mm-hmm. don't compromise that. All right. You're good. Don't You're cut good. That. Leave that one alone. Leave that. <laughs> yeah. Leave that boy alone. <laughs> I'll feel you. I'll feel you. Uh, Cog, what do you think about no. this? Just the dissatisfaction from them, Kyle saw on about PlayStation. Mm-hmm. I think for the way I internalize it is my only concern is core identity and, and yeah. the things that I love them for. And for me, it was always, you know, PlayStation Japan. And then during PlayStation 4's rise, you know, the the rise of, uh, you know, Europe, the European presence. And, mm-hmm. you know, what what's concerning to me is when obviously we, we heard about London Studios now and we knew the layoffs were coming. But I think I don't know if you guys got a chance to see the the fire sprite is kind of like a kind of like an investigative journalism report about the toxicity there. And mm-hmm. when I read that, they really bothered me because the glass door comments kind of came in and they were kind of like, nepotism and and guys is caring more about money and and not about you know the passion of the games and, and that kind of boss because i'm a i'm one that again my place to one is so near and dear to me i was the guy that had the f1s and the wipeouts and like i love those games and and obviously you know they the studio was also doing i think a twisted metal game and london studio was also doing um vr stuff so it, it showed me that maybe the commitment is no longer there you know saying mm-hmm. to that stuff so that's what i look at and kind of what dustin said earlier which is you know, I, I get worried about, you know, when the stakeholders come in, when Todoki's come in and they're like, yeah, um, you're nice people, highly motivated, but you don't understand the business and you're messing up schedule. <laughs> and it's right. like, I, I just worry from a creative standpoint, will, you know, they be able to do what they need to do? Because it's clear they make quality games. We, we know that. I, I do miss... I think even Colin talked about, it. you know, like weird Sony where they would take chances and and, and mm-hmm. you'd have these very unique experiences. And I'm just so concerned that everything is so bottom line or remastered heavy that, you know, I worry. But to, to you know, to Dustin's point or like, yeah, they, they're still doing well. The console's selling like crazy despite, you know, all that stuff. You know, obviously their profit margins, they want it to be higher. <laughs> so mm-hmm. the, the key now, what I'm seeing is we have to admit that the AAA Mark as far as sustainability, spending with the insomnia leaks, we learned like spending all this amount of money long term, 300 million to make these games and the prices the games hasn't gone up. And right. they, they, there's going to have to be a reassessment. I think what we may see is like they talked about maybe, you know, a $50 game that's shorter or they, like they're, they're playing. You could tell they we're in course correction mode right now whether it be from the over forecasting of COVID or what have you. And I think everyone is going through it. So I don't want to make it seem like it's just Sony in this regard, because everyone right. is going through this, but we're, we're in a shift. We're in a shift right now. And I'm with, I'm with shorter games. Not everything has to be AAA all the time. I'm also with diversity in titles. Like I like that a hell divers is doing well. I like that. I see power. Well, like I like that we could get back to gameplay and fun and not everything has to be hyper realistic. And last point I'll say, cause you had a, we both had Geeky and you had a great interview. It was hard to follow up your interview with Geeky. Cause I was like, oh, damn, yeah. that's the questions I wanted to ask. I got to <laughs> ask completely different questions, but it was unique because you get to see in the Japanese market, that stuff that we can, they, they don't care about that hyper realistic, you know, kind of thing. You, you learn what other markets do well. So that's what I mean. I think we're in a transition period is all. Yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. All right, boys. Time for the exact opposite. Keep it up, man. Who's killing it right now? Who are we loving? I'll make this short and sweet, Brad. Yes, sir. Q1 
Keep it up, Tifa. Keep it up, Tifa. I like it. I'm a big fan of Tifa. (laughs) She's even better in this game so far. Strong, independent woman. And uh, just keep it up. Keep up whatever you're doing, Tifa, because uh, you're great. That's all I'll say. Mazi Shot 2. Keep it up, turn based games. Yeah. Keep it up. I'm proud of y'all. Y'all, y'all getting my people to give them a try. I started the Midnight Suns train. It started, you know, the Like a Drag. Just keep it up. I, I like that people are giving them a chance. Like, and, and traditional JRPGs. Like, it, it's so cool to see. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm about. Because I know not everything has to be, you know, what I call hashtag just one hyper fidelity, slow walking, crevice crawling. <laughs> not everything has to be. We can have some balance. You know, yeah. and people realize, yo, these games are actually fun if you give them a chance. So, so yeah, that. totally. Uh, I'm just going to get keep up Square Enix. I'm enjoying Rebirth immensely right now. So happy. I got Dawn Trail on the horizon. Very excited about that. They're doing good for me. They've been doing good for me. That new Visions of Mana game coming up. Looking Ooh, nice. Yes, I'll classic. be there checking that out as well. So well done, Square. The Perhaps the dark days are over in some ways. Hopefully. All right. Let's hear from the audience. Meatball right, wrote in. Top of the morning, you odorous and yeast infected sussies. No. Jesus. See, this is what I'm saying. I'm, you're giving me the Oppenheimer. I'm like, I'm standing by the, the pond with Einstein. Okay. Like, yeah. Uh, oh, cut it back. Jesus. Stand down. You can keep the Samanosi, but that's too far. Yeah, that's, <laughs> far. that's heinous. Uh, keep it up. Lord Cognito in the realm of the signs. Your enthusiasm and industry expertise has been a pleasure to listen to over the years or over the last few years. I don't really know. I really didn't know uh, about your work prior to joining LSM, but you've quickly become one of my favorite content creators. Keep that positive attitude and health is wealth mantra going. It motivates a lot of us and a flex emoji. Oh, salute, salute, flex. Of course, of course. People, thank you. That means a lot. That means a lot. And um, yeah, I, th- I think for me, it's always we got to get back to having fun. I think yeah. that's what it is. Like we all love video games at the end of the day. So long as my thing is, as long as that's there, let's keep the disrespecting of each other down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and and just get back to it. And the health is wealth. You know, I've been on that. Just you know. We want to be around. There's too many good games. There's Dogma coming out. Yep. There's, there's I, I got to get the Hellblade. There's it, it, a lot of things coming up that I want to be around here. If I want y'all to be around here. Yeah. <laughs> but salute. Thank you for the kind words. It really, really means a lot. And hopefully I get to see y'all at a, a certain event soon. At the end mm-hmm. of the day, that would be That's dope. Right. Pull up. Sacred 300. Lords will be there. Everybody be there. But thank you. It means a lot. All right. This is from Josh Kiss Cult. Hey, fellas. First, I've been a Sacred Symbols only guy in regards to Last Stand shows, so it's awesome that I have another show I love. I wanted to drop a keep it up to Japanese slash Asian game studios with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Tekken 8, Rise of the Ronin, and Stellar Blade. They are starting 2024 strong and seem to be dropping the ball far less than their Western counterparts. Keep it up, Asian game devs. Yeah. Weebs won. Weebs won, weebs, Brad. Weebs are winning this war right now. Lockmore. The year's not over. Get fucked. Okay, <laughs> yeah, Lockmore. Get fucked, Lockmore. <laughs> yeah, Lockmore's getting owned. Yeah, you've got to become what you once hated. Just It's it's the join us moment. Yeah, yeah, man. He's probably beaten uh, Remake by now, so. Woo. Mm-hmm. Oh, we got, we got him in? Yo, we, we got, got him in. Yeah, he wow. likes Remake. Well, he actually, oh yeah, I think I did see the comment from him that he was yeah. like, all right, I can't remember, I have to admit, I'm, I am, it's Weeby, but I am enjoying it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're getting him, dude. Lock. Let's go. Yeah, I love Locke. Yeah, Locke's awesome. Fun little tease, next episode, I believe, we're going to have Locke and Jimmy Champagne on, so it's going to be chaotic. Oh, that's yeah. nice. I like that. Okay. That's going to be it's awesome. Gonna be, yeah. It's going to be a chaotic Locke. episode. That's the band right there. Salute. All right. This is from Jacob Starr. Hello, Booty Bongo Brad, Deep Throat Dustin, and Federal Booby Inspector Cock. <laughs> Why I gotta be a molester though? <laughs> Why I gotta molest the situation? You know, it's, it's federal, it's above board, it's all above board, Cock. Okay, so, yeah. these are the legit reason for my yeah, molester. Yeah, yeah, federal. 
<laughs> I'm going to control. No game is crazy. <laughs> Deep throat Dustin is very funny to me. Yeah, Cog, I was going to say you're complaining about uh, sure. booby inspecting and I'm I'm the deep throater over here, so <laughs> that's just how it goes. Uh, there's levels. There's levels. <laughs> uh, Jacob had a, I think he had to sort it out and keep it up, but I just took out the sort it out because you ain't getting two in one. Yeah, get real. Uh, I said I have a same to sort it out. Keep it up, Sega, with both the Persona and Yakuza franchises seemingly on full blast. Is this not? Evidence enough that triple A games can be made with modest budgets and not take five plus years in development time. On top of this, the games are actually fun and typically not bug ridden messes upon launch. However, this is where their uh, their key or sorted out was going to be, which was also on Sega, but you're not getting that. <laughs> Have a my wife looks at me funny when I'm playing Yakuza Zero and I pick up a porn star trading card kind of day that is definitely a duke listener right there mm-hmm. is that anytime mean, i get that like anytime, patrick klepek you know have you yeah. seen that <laughs> when he was like hiding from seeing a, a booby on his mm-hmm. tv like that's yeah. good stuff <laughs> yeah, see, see the duke influence on the end i like that yeah always the duke influence on having that kind of day mm-hmm. Yeah, very shout good Sega. yeah shout out to sega um, yeah sega dude doing great work right now i'm very pleased yeah. for sega right now it yeah. feels like they're they're hitting their stride right now man it feels like it they got yeah. some big franchises even sonic man it's a better yeah. state than he's been in a long time better, in my opinion state. movies better i mean movies better yeah yeah resurgence and, and like like you said because you, you're realizing the budgets of the the games and they're not as crazy as you think. You would think they would be like, you know, spending all this crazy amount like these other games and they're in this nice pocket. And I think yep. they're, they're starting to also um, realize the value of some of their classic IP. I want to see how the uh, the Sega Ages collection thing mm-hmm. goes and Super Game and stuff like that. But it's cool to see people playing and giving the uh, Persona series a shot, giving the Yakuza series a shot. I think they're finally getting to that point. I, I, what's funny to me is like, oh, they love us. They they like this. So, you know, now yeah. they're in this pocket, you know, kind of thing. And I think that's dope. Yeah, and um, Metaphor coming yeah. out this year later yeah. too. And I'm okay. so excited for that game. Yes, forgot about Hell that. yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of metaphor, let's talk about Persona 3. Reload, Dustin, you have finished this game. Yes, I am totally done with the Platinum Trophy. Ooh. So Ooh, okay. went through and locked that up, made sure to clean it up before Rebirth came out. So again, no spoilers. Don't worry. No spoilers here. I'm just talking about my high level thoughts because me and Brad and Maddie talked about this game a few weeks ago. And uh, this game's awesome. This game is so incredibly good. It's easy to recommend to people that if you've never played a Persona game, and this one looks cool to you. It's a great point to jump in if you want. Um, honestly, you can practically jump in with any Persona game. But mm-hmm. if you want to play the new hotness, this is a great way to jump in. And uh, yeah, the, the Platinum Trophy wasn't too bad either for those who care about that kind of stuff. Um Some people like to do the day by day guide and I can't recommend that personally just because I think that takes out some of the fun of having the freedom of choosing what you want to do. I've mentioned I need to just make sure I pull it up and mention because people every time I bring this up, uh, people always ask me what guide I used uh, for Mm. just it's a light guide on what social links you should prioritize because some of them are only available on certain days. So this website is called game8.co. So if you search that and just search best social links to max first, this is a basic priority guide. That's what I recommend. It's a little bit of a mix of both because if you do want to get the platinum, you got to be a little careful. I was coming up towards the end of the game. I was getting nervous that I had maybe fucked it up. (laughs) I only had a few days left to get in all these social links, but I did do it. It was okay. Nice. But In terms of broad strokes about the story, the thing that I like about this the most, and this is a conversation you and I are having uh, off mic, Brad, but yeah, um, the the way that the characters interweave with the main story is really, really good and interesting in that 
you have characters like um, Yukari and Mitsuru who are very deeply connected to the core conflict of the story. And it creates a very uh, personal motivation for these characters that I really, really mm-hmm. like. And they, they discover new things as the game unfolds, where the motivations grow even stronger. Um, but you also have characters like Junpei who are not as attached, but they get weaved in in a different way later on that I really appreciate. And this is a pretty stark difference to Persona 5 that I would say in that each character is deeply in the story depending on the current uh, palace. And usually they're kind of interweaved into each palace. But in terms of the overarching story, it kind of feels like in Persona 5, you get a big main section about one character during their palace. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they're kind of just along for the ride. Uh, Mm -hmm. Which you can do their social links, which Brad, you and I kind of had a a little debate about the quality of the social links in Persona 5, which I think they aren't. They're the weakest of the Mm -hmm. entire series in that the social links I didn't find particularly interesting or I mean, they're personal, of course, but um, like, for example, uh, is it Ryuji, right? And his Mm -hmm. dilemma with the track team, I guess. It's not bad, but I just when I think about and I compare that to the social links of three and four, where particularly in four, four has, I think, my favorite overall social links because of how personal and how deep it goes for each character and how the overall theme persona four is about finding being your true self, finding your true self. And each of these characters are dealing with some really tough scenarios and through those social links, they're able to grow and change and and become their true self. And three also has a lot of that as well. Three is not perfect though, because of Tartarus is the main Ooh. thing, which is basically for, for those of you who don't know what Tartarus is, is persona obviously is a game about dungeons. And so in persona five, which is a lot of touchstone for a lot of people, there are fully unique dungeons for each palace. So you're never doing the same thing. They have different level design. <laughs> it's sad to say, but it's like, oh, it has level design. It has level design. Where Tartarus is procedurally generated mm. corridors. And mm. I don't want to call them mazes because you don't get lost, but it's just like, right. here's a random floor. There's going to be chests throughout. There may be some special doors you go through to fight a boss. There may be some hidden modifiers. But that's it. And you're going to do that for over, what is it, 270 yeah, floors like or something? Floors. I, yeah. I can't remember exactly. And that's it. That's yeah. all the dungeon crawling. And it, uh, it has the same problem, I think, that all Persona games have in that they, they increase the amount of the boring dungeon crawling towards the end of the game. So when you're kind of like, all right, time to wrap this up. And you're like, oh, man, you're going to give me the longest section of the grind towards the end. They do that in all these games. It's like just it's okay. You don't have to do that. I get it, but it's all good. So I I, the last thing I'll just end off because I know you have some write ins here about this game to Mm -hmm. go into. The last thing I'll just say is that this game has put my persona ranking into question in that I've always been a persona for golden guy. Uh, Mm -hmm. Even after five came out, I always thought golden was a little better. Royal kind of made me question that because I think that the extra content in Royal is so incredibly good. Maddie and I have, uh, I think we did the the spoiler cast years ago together uh, at this point, but we kind of were on the same point that Royal takes persona five from being a nine out of 10 to a 10 out of 10 in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Three, um, three is held back a little bit by Tartarus, but I think that, the core st- the core plot mixed with its characters are mm-hmm. overall the strongest persona four best characters persona five best overarching plot and persona three maybe doesn't have the best of either but the way they're interweaved makes it really really special so overall i was really impressed with this game i didn't expect to like it as much as i did it's gonna be in my top 10 this year top five most likely and honestly mm-hmm. maybe a slot in my top 10 overall Ooh. i i i'm i feel Whoa. lost right now so <laughs> they're gonna make persona 4 
rewind or something like that at some point i mean the money speaks right now over a million copies within the first three days of reload they're gonna remake four so at that point when i play that i'll be able to reassess but don't sleep on this one especially if you like persona 5 they add a lot of persona 5 elements Mm -hmm. into this to modernize it and it uh it all just came out really nice it runs flawless 4k 60 on i think both ps5 and xbox has Mm -hmm. nice subtle ray tracing in there as well quality of life there's a rewind feature so if you fuck up and do a social link you shouldn't have done yet or something like that you can go back to specific points just overall a really really awesome project i'm so glad they made it and i can't recommend it enough yeah on game pass dude and on game pass Pass. that's so exciting I, mm-hmm. you know, I personally didn't play it on game. I have a Series X. I'm just not as plugged into that ecosystem, but I'm so happy it's there just because I'm like, yes, let's get more people in. And mm-hmm. the, the ease of access for Persona games on Game Pass has been awesome. So mm-hmm. there's it's really a no brainer to, I guess, even if just you're curious, maybe you'll check it out and say it's not for you. That's fine. But if you have access to it, there's no excuse to just yeah. go mm-hmm. in and uh, check it out. Oh, yeah. All right, this is from Lewis Charles. Hello, Summoners. I'm about 10 hours in Persona 3 Reload, and I'm still unsure of how if I like it much. I would appreciate it. I would appreciate it if Dustin and Brad is cog into it could explain why they love so what they love so much about Persona games. For my part, I like the art style, the music, the combat, and the waifus, of course. My main gripe is that I have to constantly use a guide for classroom or social link dialogue answers, which are pretty important for leveling up stats in Arcana. I also find normal enemy encounters to be quite repetitive, as in most JRPGs. I was just wondering how these games can be so niche, but still be so beloved that you have to have to search to find navigate reviews from critics and users alike. Oh, to search for negative things about the game because it's but it's so niche. Is this a weeb thing? (laughs) This is my second Persona game as I 100% Persona 5 Royal on Game Pass in 2022, which took me more than 100 hours. And I'm wondering if I have have it inside me to go all the way through with this one as well. Thanks. I really love the show and looking forward to seeing Brad in more LSM shows. Defining Duke, perhaps Mm -hmm. in the future, keep it up. I was on one Defining Duke. Yes, yes. Maybe if it's like something that I have good knowledge on or something or I'd fit into maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But Definitely. like, I'm not the third chair or anything like that, guys. No. I just pop in every now and then. Pop in, it'll come through every once in a while. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, is it, it is a curious thing? to me. Is it a weeb thing that it gets such high scores? Um, maybe. I think they're actually just really good games underneath all that, though, too. Even if you put a different aesthetic over it, I think there's a lot of compelling elements to it the story the gameplay is really good the world people like i don't think it's just necessarily a weeb thing yeah i gotta make fun of our boy lewis charles here for a second because i this happens often i see this where if a game scores really high and people are like uh, oh is this just uh is this a weeb thing i don't get it you know, like, yeah, it can't, I, yes, how could this be I the know. case? It's like, maybe it's just not for you. And that's which <laughs> he's kind of odd because he writes about 100 percenting Persona 5 Royal. So it sounds like it would be for you. Yeah. Um, but Is it just Tartarus. Yeah, I mean, I get it. Tartarus, if you're coming from Persona 5 and you're not into it, some JRPG grindy, annoying stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get it. I, I would definitely understand why it'd be like, yeah, this is a step back in a lot of ways but i don't know the thing about jrpgs to me is just always that they're not going to be for everybody and even in my case certain jrpgs aren't for me and that's just how it goes so sometimes you find one you like sometimes you don't and that's okay there's so many it's like i I guess it's it's a it's a whole genre to itself but there are sub genres within the genre that are also highly specific on whether or not you're in or out yeah here Here's one thing I saw that like I just don't do because I think it'll ruin the game for me in a lot of ways or make it less enjoyable is said their main gripe is I have to constantly use a guide for classroom or social link dialogue to answer questions, which are pretty important for leveling stats in Arcana. Just don't use the guide, man. 
for that stuff. Just go naturally. Go with the flow. You'll be okay if you're a few stats behind. You'll get through the game. Unless you're like, I have to get the Persona trophy or Platinum trophy. Just go with the flow, man. Mm -hmm. Just be in the moment. Be that high school student in that moment. Or if you have to look at a guy, just don't look at it all the time. Yeah. Just occasionally. You got to let go of that kind of stuff. I think people get caught up on like guides and following a strict Mm -hmm. uh, plan or something like that. Like Colin, he always uses guides for like everything. Just like, just be in the moment, man. Just be there. Naturally gravitate towards the. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. All right. This is from Toilet Drummer. Oh, Guten Tag, boys. I very much appreciate Dustin putting in time to clear P3 reload before Rebirth cross slashes its way into the zeitgeist. Persona 3 is my favorite game since I played it about 15 years ago and my deep appreciation for the cast, story, and execution of the very personal theme was only reaffirmed with the fantastic remake. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the last couple months, a couple of months, Um, and the ending specifically. I know you can only talk about so much without spoiling the whole thing, so fingers crossed for a spoiler talk at some point down the line. Thanks to keep up the summon us eat. Well, quickly before you get into Dustin, we could do a spoiler thing on it, We'll just have to have Maddie on it one time. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I'll finish it for a while. I have played Persona 3 before, though. I finished Persona 3, so you're not going to spoil anything for me. Yeah. But we'll just, get, just have to get Maddie on it, probably. Yeah, we're going to have to figure something out. I know. Yeah, because it might be a while for you, Brad, and I don't want to wait too long. But I want we you to probably it's... just do it sooner than later. Yeah, I know. I will have to figure out what we're doing, because I know we're supposed to do spoiler cast on this show, but maybe that makes sense for a Sacred Symbols Plus or something. But. I don't know. We'll figure out something because I do want to get into the ending and the the Mm -hmm. last few months. It is very difficult. I would say nearly impossible to say anything without spoiling anything other than what I'll say is. Some of the things that they do in the directions in the story are uh, unexpected and different from Persona 4 and 5 in a way that I deeply appreciated all of the games are very mature and dark, but something about three feels more so. And not just that I'm like, oh, mature, edgy shit happens or something. It's like, no, it's like these characters are dealing with some really serious mm-hmm. burdens and have to deal with them uh, in their own ways. And so that's one of the main things about the latter half and, and the ending of the game that I really like. So. I'm not going to say anything else because I just can't, I just can't and I don't want to no, yeah, yeah. I don't want to spoil anything, yeah. but I just want to let it be known that my appreciation for the ending is is there. It's very high. Yes. Yes. All right. Last game, boys. Tekken 8 Cog. You're beloved. You're dearly beloved. Here it is. Ooh. The steel case. He's got it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a very oh. nice steel book, too, man. That's father and son. That's beautiful. Yeah. Ready for the next battle. <laughs> 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 what we got? Just my do- overall, my top level? Or yeah, just, yeah, like, just you've been playing. It's been a while since yeah. we talked about it. Just how are you Ooh. feeling about it now? Yeah, man, it's still settling in. I mean, again, just how amazing it is. And, and again, we talked about from the uh, from the from the campaign standpoint, going kind of full anime. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a great decision, not taking themselves seriously, not trying to do what Mortal Kombat does, but at the same time, involving the cast, having a full co- cohesive story. So the single player stuff is is fantastic. They went back to the character episodes, which is for each individual character to also give them the ending. That's a classic Tekken trope since the original Tekken. Every character, including sub bosses, have their own ending. Um, Harada, them just did a stream. They're talking about um, the next DLC character will be Eddie Gordo. So they're going to, who's a fan favorite. Who's yeah, of course. Him. They're also doing something which I think is really cool, which was a big complaint from Tekken 7, which is a lot of the DLC characters really had no involvement in the narrative. And now they're going to show, okay, this is what this character was doing while the main story was going on, giving them a character episode, which I think is great. Um, right now we're in, um, I would say they've been very 
agile with balancing and patching, getting on top of things, things that are kind of busted with certain characters and stuff like that. Also certain, I think the meta is formulating and there are some stronger characters, but they're also letting things play out because it's still, you know, Still early really days. Yeah. The big controversy right now is, is Tekken Shop. <laughs> um, <laughs> they didn't play better in a store post-release that some right. people are not pleased with. My hot take is I think this is a little overblown. Look, I get the principle of if, okay, if you was going to do a store, you maybe you should let your community know that you're going right. to do it from the beginning. But it's cosmetic, guys. That's the other thing. Like, I'm not going to go crazy if... Like they're going to offer, you know, suits from classic Tekken's, Tekken 3, Tekken 4, stuff like it's optional. You don't have to do it. And the reason why I am going to push back at the community that's hating on them is Namco historically has given so much value and extra features in their fighting games over the years that it to me to sit there and say, you know, the devs shouldn't be allowed to, (laughs) you know, to make any type of profit on cosmetics. I think it is a being extreme and to try to paint them as this evil corporation like Tekken has been giving you Tekken Ball and Tekken 4 all these classic extra modes free of charge and really no DLC kind of stuff so I, I'm on the side maybe I'm a little bit too biased that I'm like alright guys are overblowing this but and I don't care what nobody says if I see a suit that I like I'm I'm using it $2, mm-hmm. $3 I'm buying it that's just me so you got that and then um, I'm in heavy into the competitive scene now I've really you know, been doing my ranked matches. I think the player matches are awesome. So if like all of us get a group together, you know, we could like me and you'll be fighting Brad, but also whoever's in the room can spectate and yeah. see the fight real time. That's great. So it's like the old days of me and with the boys in front of mm-hmm. the controller. Um, it's been great, man. It's been great. I, I really, I, I will say this, and I think a question's come up that I do want to ask in, in reference to the ranked, but ranked has been a ple- pleasant because this is the, the reason why this is the, the GOAT Tekken the game's great. Story's great. UE5 graphical fidelity is by far the best looking fighting game out right now. But they got the net code. They've got the online. That's one thing Tekken really hasn't been able to nail. Even though five, people consider Tekken 5 great, the online net code and 6 is eh, not good. Mm-hmm. The net code is good. The only issue now is guys were playing on wireless. Please stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you Wire watch my dudes. Yeah. Mm-mm. We got it. We got to We at least give us an indicator that they on that so that I would choose not to match. And mm-hmm. the fact that cross platform plays here has been tremendous for the community. But yeah, I can't stop playing it. Tekken, be honest with you, it's so good, bro. <laughs> it affected <laughs> me starting Rebirth. I was supposed to Ooh. really, when Rebirth and Infinite Wealth, I, when Infinite Wealth came out, remember those two came out on the same day. Mm-hmm. I held off because I couldn't. My body was like, "You want to play Tekken, but you don't want to stop." That's how addicting it is. And me and Maddie have had this discussion. It's very hard to put down. So it's a testament to how great the game is. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna yeah. have a ball, man. Still, and it's so easy just to pick up and play a few matches. So you're just like, "Oh, I can play a couple. I got time." Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. the boss is so big. They learn yeah. more characters. It's just it's it's the never ending loophole. I I got my a thousand game score in, in the pro, like fairly quickly like i just can't stop with it It, it's that good dude this game has me interested and i'm not a fighting game guy i try every few years and i think tekken this new one and this is no diss on the quality of the game i just know myself when i see this game on sale i'm very interested in picking it up um because i don't i when i played the demo it felt (laughs) <laughs> sounds i sound like a moron for any fighting game fans i was like this feels I different do. it feels more punchy or so there's something about it that i was like i might be able to play this as opposed to yes. when i try to play street fighter or something like that where immediately i'm like oh i don't i'm out of my league here and i don't understand it there's something about tekken mm-hmm. very particular feel that i like yeah i would highly recommend i know people who frown upon it but i think the special style mode is great for onboarding new players that don't really play fighting games like that and i will say the arcade quest i told you this before brad like the Mm -hmm. arcade quest mode where you make your avatar and you literally go into these japanese arcades and it's teaching you the basics of tekken and and it's so well done 
That's the difference. It's, it really has an appreciation for people who, one, never played a fighting game and have no idea of the Tekken systems. Two, from the law standpoint, there's even like a whole gallery of these little vignettes of, okay, this is what happened in Tekken 1. This is what happened. Like it's, it really gives you the law. So if you missed out, you know nothing. You've got that on the story side and on the fighting side. And I, and I, I can go at nauseam about how great the super ghost battle, the ghost system is, and the replay. I just taught Maddie something. He didn't even know that every time you fight in Tekken, whether it be offline or online, the replay system actually records the match and you could go into your personal replays. So the cool thing about this is the best learning from Tekken because you can you can watch the replay. The game will tell you, hey, Dustin, that, that attack you kept getting hit, that was a high attack. You could have been ducking that. It'll pause it, let you into the replay at the point of it happening and replay that section to improve yourself Whoa. for those 15 to 20 seconds in real time. Whoa. So it's next level teaching. It's next level dojo time. And I think it's revolutionary in fighting games. And it, it's fantastic, man. Yep. Uh, Edwin Lewis wrote in, hello, wise and stoic summoners. I've been playing Tekken 8 recently and I'm having an absolute blast. But one thing I've always struggled with is trying to stay calm and collected when loading into a ranked match. Knowing that I could get demoted after making a few silly mistakes makes each and every match intense, but also quite stressful. I was just wondering, do you guys have any ways that you compose yourself before jumping into a ranked mode or any game, including fighting games? Keep it up for that work or keep it up for the great work, everyone. Hope you're all enjoying FF7 Rebirth. We are. Salute, salute. So hmm. the thing about this is I feel like this is something that just goes away over time the more you do it. And you just got to realize like it's going to the nerves will just go away as you continue to fight, continue to play. And it's like if you get demoted, it's totally fine. That's just part of the game, man. You, you lose and you learn from it. Then you improve from there. So I think you just got to look at it like that. It's not over, you know, it's not over if you get demoted. You can fight your way back up and you will. Yeah, no, yeah. great, great strategy. I think that um, this is what I'm going through right now. And people have to understand because what it is, is you got the, 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 the adrenaline is high, the tension, mm -hmm. the sweaty palm, the move ain't coming out, you're getting steamrolled and you're frustrated, right? The, the key, though, what I always tell people is that one, you learn. You have to take pride in learning from a loss. And you're like, okay, what were they doing? That's why I said use the replay system. That That's huge. I, what I would do is after I lose to someone, I'll download their ghost immediately. I'm like, okay, I'll be down. That, that's the best, you know, Paul Phoenix player I've ever seen. He's doing things to me that I can't, you know, what, whoever that matchup that was giving you problems. Also realize there's so many characters in the game. You're not familiar with all the different things. So that's the other thing. Download the ghost practice there. But also people, the cool thing about Tekken Ranked is while you're waiting to be match made, you can, you're actually in, a, in the practice mode fighting while you're waiting. Take time to work on things. Work on things while you're there. Don't just sit there endlessly just beat the computer. Just, you know, work on pull up the move list. Start working on combos, things like that. So that's what I usually do to kind of get that down. And sometimes it's okay to laugh at a loss. You're like, man, I got Steve. Okay, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going I'm to see you. Oh, you have this feature? <laughs> You're going to laugh? You could make someone your rival. That's you'd be awesome. Like, oh, he beat that. I'm make and then you could see where they are in the rankings in real time as you going through it. It's hilarious. So That's you can awesome. create these little things. And the last thing I'll say is that um, it's frowned upon, but I will push back against the hardcore community. All right, when you play someone in ranked, the match immediately ends. You got the ability to rematch right then and there. Right. Usually, what guys do that are really dominant, they want to rematch you immediately because they want to farm you. And get their rank up, right? It's okay if you got your win. You're one and done. I'm good. I'm gonna go back to the so because sometimes you want to end on a high note to keep your your confidence yeah. up. It's okay. That's why I say it's okay. Cause a lot of the hardcore guys are like, guys are just one and done to me. They're not they've not finished in the set. It's all right, man. Play that's how what you it is. Play. It's the set. It's the yeah. fighting game tournament set. That's what it is. And it's okay. So for new guys that's getting into the system. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Play, yeah, play, play. I wouldn't worry about that until you're like higher up or whatever. Exactly. When you're figuring it out, it's all right, man. Yeah. All right, boys. We got some questions to end the show, as we always do. Once again, if you'd like to send in questions to this show or any of our other shows, patreon.com slash last Media. Head on over. All right. This is from Hamish K. 
Good day from Australia. On the talk of Tekken 8, what are some of the first fighting games that got you into fighting games? My first game was the original Super Smash Brothers on N64 playing with my brothers. My second game, though, was Soul Calibur 2. And ever since, I've been a fan and loved the series. I enjoy the new Soul Calibur 6, but it feels like it's Tekken's other or Tekken's other brother that people forget about. Like, oh yeah, you're Tekken's little bro. I've heard about you. <laughs> heard about you. It doesn't get as much attention. I would like to hear Lord Beefy Cog's thoughts on Soul Calibur with how close it is to Tekken. P.S. I would love for a Soul Calibur, or I'd love for Soul Calibur to get an anime series like Castlevania. If you all could get a fighting game or any game into an anime series, what would it be? All right, let's go to the first part, though. First, thoughts on um, Soul Calibur, Cog? Yeah, huge thoughts, Cog. Uh, Dustin does that Dreamcast in the back. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Oh, my God. That was the best thing I've ever seen at that time. When I saw Soul oh Calibur my for God, Dreamcast. Yeah. yeah, it was insane. Wow. Arcade, like, perfect. Arcade, Just... perfect, brother, right? And um, I remember the character Killick with the staff, the Cotters, and, and seeing it in real time. Yep. I believe that was 60 frames per second at the time. Where it looked amazing I think it me. was. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, that was a game changer. Soul Calibur is great. I, it's sad that it never really came back. I felt like it kind of declined. Had six was the last one. Yeah. And I remember one when it had, while. remember when like they, they used to have the DLC specific characters per platform. Remember like yes, Link I was do. on. <laughs> yeah, GameCube. Yeah, like it did like, did, what you call it had. And uh, Hihachi on PS2 and Xbox yep. had Spawn. Yep, and then it was one year, one had Vader, and one had Yoda, and yeah. all that stuff. It's a shame. The, the, the core systems I thought was cool. It just, I don't know, it just it just didn't catch what I could, see, could consider with the competitive community. Mm-hmm. I think it's probably what did it in, but graphically it was always a looker. I always felt it was fun. Um, yeah, so I mean, I would love, as far as the second question in reference to, um, you know, anime series, Mm-hmm. Um, I'm old, so a lot of the animes I know probably people don't even know about. But there's this one called Gachaman, and they were um, I think there was a game. It came out on Wii or Wii U. It's called like Capcom versus Tetsunoko. But I would love an anime of the, the G4 slash Gachaman characters yeah. separately. I would love because I, I grew up with. I love that series. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was before my time. And that that's one of the things that uh, Dustin. If I when I go to Japan. I want to find the models, the toys. I will go to all the shops. I told Gage, like, please let me know if you know these places. I'll go outside the outskirts of Japan. I need to find, you know, any type of memorabilia or characters or toys or games on that stuff. That I love that that series. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I've never really played Soul Calibur, but I'm mm. also just never really been into fighting games. It's something that just doesn't. Uh, compute in my brain. <laughs> I don't know. It's I. Uh, I kind of feel bad. I feel like I'm missing out. But um, Smash Brothers is like the the. I always feel weird about calling Smash Brothers a fighting game because it doesn't. Mm. It's like half a fighting game. It's like a pla- <laughs> you know the platform fighting game. But um, but yeah, maybe maybe at some point a game will it'll finally click for me. Like we talked about the From Software click. Maybe that'll happen mm-hmm. for me. But mm-hmm. we'll see what happens. We need a Arc System Works One Piece game. Ooh. Then you're in, dude. Is I played it? the Arc System Works Persona fighting game, and I also yeah, no. felt uh, oh, like a moron. Man. Arena, Those yeah, are fun. Arena. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I actually like Soul Calibur a lot. I like. I loved two, especially when it came out, and obviously one was super good. I played some of three, but I just kind of fell off over mm-hmm. time. I fell off in fighting games in general, kind of around that time, though. But uh, yeah, I dude, Soul Calibur always has a special place in my heart. Like if a new Soul Calibur comes out, dude, I'm gonna be excited. Yeah, like maybe. hell yeah, hell yeah. Some of the old G's are coming back. They talk about a Virtual Fighters now coming back. And yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy time for fighting games. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in terms of fighting games that got me into fighting games, um, like many others, probably Street Fighter Two, Mortal Kombat. That's probably yeah. it for people our age. Yeah, the goats. Back mm-hmm. then. Mm-hmm. All right. This is from Corey Christensen. Uh, with Johan, I don't know how to say his last name. Pillow said? I don't know how to say that. One of you could take a crack at it. No. Okay. No, 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 of no, Arrowhead no. saying <laughs> that they are p- prioritizing fun and content over DLSS in his game, Helldivers 2, 
still will eventually get DLSS. Is this the right decision? If so, should the gaming industry follow? So he's prioritizing fun and content over implementing DLSS right now. It will come, but it's not the focus. Now, for this game... Oh, Dustin, that face, let's go. I got a take on this, but let's go. go. You you ready for it? Well, here's the thing. Uh, You've been working on this game for eight years. Yeah. So... I get it. It's a nice thing to say, like, oh, we're focusing on content. Uh, Helldivers 2 is amazing. I love it. And you guys are doing an amazing (laughs) job. The server stuff. I get it. This is this. I'm not buying it. Sorry. Uh, You had a long time working on this game. Uh, The content. I would say it's the right amount of content for this type of game and what I would expect. But I would say it's kind of light on the lighter side. That's okay. Mm. I don't need anything more. It's good. But the DLSS thing, I mean, it, it runs pretty good overall. So it's not like it needs it. But I wish it did have it. And it would be good for people that have, uh, if you have a lower end, like a 2070 or something, an older card that has that kind of support it. Yeah, it would be, it would be really nice to have that. So um, I just, I don't know if I buy the the PR talk here, but that's okay. Helldivers 2 is amazing. I love it. Yeah. I mean, personally, I think content for this kind of game right now is more important because even with so many technical problems, people still can't get enough of this game. Yeah. So I I think you can keep that player base. Like people will put up with technical faults if they think the game is fun enough. It doesn't matter. As long as they're still having fun, they will deal with this kind of stuff. And we're seeing it play out right now. So I think they're making the right choice for right now, but it just depends how long it will take to get DLSS. Like, are we talking years from now? Or are we talking months? So mm. I don't know. Just depends. Yeah. yeah, I didn't realize it was that long that they were making it. So yeah, I mean, obviously content is key and they want it to be fun and stuff like that. But uh, if, if, if I will say though, if, if, if technical issues continue though, Mm-hmm. It will uh, it will affect it it's in conjunction if if the con and also the content roadmap is not frequent enough. So mm-hmm. they got you know they got a hit they got a hit. Hopefully they they do the right things. Yeah, I think they figured out or fixed the biggest technical hit was just getting people to play the game. Yeah, so yeah. that's so, good. <laughs> so. Logging in is helpful. All right, this is from Derek Davis. Hey, fellas. To the point, have any of you ever picked up a game as a laugh or a goof expecting it to be terrible in all the right ways, only to be surprised by how genuinely good it was? I'm a brewer and did not think think this with Brewmaster Beer Brewing Simulator. I saw it on sale on PlayStation and thought I'd be buying a busted, inaccurate shit show that I'd have fun with ironically, and it proved me wrong in every way. Very accurate right down to formulas and sensory language and a delight to play. Even helped me finish some brewing fundamentals. Don't judge a game by its sale price, I guess. Thanks a million and keep up the good work, my dude. Hmm. Uh, somewhat, somewhat similar thing for me was Power Wash Simulator. I was yes. like, oh, this seems goofy, whatever, dude. Mm-hmm. And then I was doing it, I was like, oh, I get it now. It's kind I'm of having fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, mine's is quick. Um, it, I, yeah, I'm it's sorry, gonna be finish. Kingdom Hearts for all of you out there who haven't played it yet. That's what it's gonna be. Yeah. Ho ho ho, Mickey, ho ho ho, Donald, jeez, ho ho hearts. Then the, you're gonna play and you're like, oh, dude, I get it. I get, get it. ready, I get Colin. It get it, I get it. Oh man, yeah, mine's is quick. It's just um. As, as, as much as I clown on the vampire survivors community, <laughs> when I finally <laughs> tried it, I was like, all right, I, I kind of get it. I kind of get it. it. It's a nice, quick get in, get out, you know, um, the power ups and the simplicity of it. And I was like, I do like it now. <laughs> like, I go for it. Yeah, I, I can, yeah. I've come around after slandering them so long. Especially, it's a great way for me to like end my gaming night sometimes. Just something on quick, mindless, nothing too comp- complicated. Yeah. And those power ups, it gets crazy. It gets hectic on, on the yeah. and stuff like that. So, yeah. That dopamine, man. Absolutely. Yes. Well, and then one more run kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. 
I, I'm trying to think of a time that I've been surprised and ended up enjoying stuff because I picked up a lot of games that were looked bad and I had fun with because they were bad. I mean, I have the mm-hmm. the stack of Balan Wonderworld copies back there that I've gotten over the years. And that's a, a yeah, it's a bad game that's not fun to play, but it's right. funny. The, the reverse draw <laughs> distance. That yeah, was something Chris <laughs> said on Sacred that's iconic now. So <sighs> I'm. I brought that up in my review for that game, dude. The reverse draw distance. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. (laughs) So, yeah, I'm blanking on something I ended up really enjoying, but. It's okay if you can't think of anything. Yeah. It's all good. All right. Final question. Oh, from Devon Colbert. Hello, summoners. Wanted to know your thoughts on ARPGs as a whole. Do you enjoy playing them? Do you think the genre needs to be spiced up? This brings me to ask if you have seen No Rest for the Wicked by Moon Studios. This game looks very cool so far and wanted to hear your uh, get your thoughts. Have a good one. And thanks for all you do. So Mm. RPGs, I think RPGs are cool. Now, we're talking ARPGs here. I don't know a lot about No Rest for the Wicked. It looks very nice. What I've seen looks great. I don't know how... When I think ARPGs, I think of insane in-game grinding and stuff like that. I'm thinking of Path of Exile and stuff like that. And I don't know if No Rest for the Wicked is necessarily going to be like that, so it's hard for me to say. But I think ARPGs are cool. They are something I got into later in my life also, because I didn't have a PC until I was like in high school. But I played Diablo 2 Resurrected when it came out. I thought that was really fun. I played Diablo 3. I played some of 4. Uh, Path of XL 2 looks really good, so I think they're fun. They're just big commitments, in my opinion. Yeah, I uh, I don't know if I'm I'm trying to think of the games I've played that are like this. Obvi- Diablo 3 was an addiction for me yeah. for a long time, and that game ruled. I Diablo 1 and 2, I have nothing against them. I, they were just kind of before my time uh, yeah. when I got into that kind of stuff, but Diablo 3 was amazing. Diablo 4... I don't know what's I can't pinpoint what I didn't like about that game because when mm. I started it, I really liked it. And then I just one night Fell I was off. like, yeah, I don't know if I feel like playing that. Mm. And then yeah. I never felt compelled to really go back, which is sad because I was really, really excited about that game. But something about it uh, didn't grab me the same way as as Diablo three, um, even though it visually is way, way better oh, yeah, than than Diablo three. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I actually haven't seen gameplay for No Rest for the Wicked until I'm watching it on YouTube now. And man, this looks awesome. Yeah, it looks uh, great. I absolutely want to play this and check this out. So I'm trying to th- like does. um, I'm trying to think of other games that qualify in this genre. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, um, there's like Last Epoch. I think that just came out. Oh, Jimmy was telling like, me about that. Yeah. And he said that was pretty cool. So, yeah. So I guess I'm just kind of out of the loop. What's up? Oh, Torchlight. That's the one I was thinking of. I played some Torchlight uh, 2 in particular. Yeah. That's the other mm-hmm. one I yeah mm-hmm. definitely put some time into. But yeah, I haven't played Path of Exile. Um, haven't played the older Diablo games. So yeah, I'm a little, a little bit of a dark spot for me. Yeah, same. Oh. Same. Yeah, same for me. I, I don't play a lot of them. And um, I will say, though, this game, I remember seeing it and when it was, uh, I believe it was Game Awards, was the uh, debut of it. And mm-hmm. I was blown away. And once I saw Moon Studios' name, and I'm like, okay, those are the guys that made Ori. Yeah. And this handcrafted, beautiful world that it's criminal that that game doesn't get more attention. It's one of the few bright spots of the Xbox One <laughs> generation. <laughs> and I'm just like, man, nobody played it. Like, I did. That game was awesome. Amazing. Both of them are great. Yeah. The feels. Oh, my God. Yeah. The music, the art style, yeah, everything's great. Great. So yeah, I, I I saw it. I reacted very loudly. They actually contacted me on because I, IOP um Moon. They were like, "Hey, can we use your reaction?" I was like, "Really?" I was like, "I, I was like, what did I say?" <laughs> so I, I remember it was kind of like, "Yo, Moon, oh, I know them." But yeah, I like I liked what I saw. So salute to them. Um, definitely gonna be uh, picking this up. Gonna cover it, and um, it's very lordly. I, I like the mm-hmm. I like the time period, you know. So it fits the, the theme for me. And yeah, everything I saw, so cool. So yeah, I'm in. Um, I want to see what their next entry is on this in this genre. And actually, I'm in the same boat with you, uh, Dustin, with Diablo. Like, um, not like some hardcore. I got in late with three, loved three, four, loved it, started it, grinding every day. But then something happened, and I'm just like, eh, 
eh, I'm not going back mm. to it. So maybe yeah. when the new expansion comes out or whatever, oh, right. then I'll, because I heard it's like a big revamp, almost like Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty stuff. Like they, oh. they are going in for this, this big hmm. update. So hmm. that's what I think I'm going to, because I guess what it is, the seasons haven't been doing it for me. The yeah. seasons, the current. Sure. So I'll wait for a bigger expansion. Do you think that's going to be on Game Pass, the expansion? I think no. I think that it'll just join Game Pass because, like, it's going to join before the expansion drops. Right. But I think they're going they're going to give you the taste. All right, it's in this. It's in the service. It's free. Oh, by the way, here's Taken King now. Pay, pay for that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know, okay. It's going to be that it. If I had to guess, I that that's okay. what I, I don't. I I would be shocked if they gave that free content because I heard it's a substantial update. Yeah. Post it go, joining Game Pass in its base form. Hmm. Interesting. All right, dudes, that's it. We are done. Another episode in the books, a fun one. Got to talk rebirth with the boys. Good times all around. Um, I don't know. Do you guys have any final thoughts or words before we head out? Anything you want to say? Yeah. Plug. It's uh it's a nice 68 degrees here in western Pennsylvania. And you know what that means. It's time to grill. Hot Ooh. dogs, hamburgers. That's what's on the menu tonight, boys. And I'm Damn. so excited nice. to go Damn. out and grill this evening. It's going to be nice. Damn, Damn, that sounds good. I yeah. like that. I like that. Yeah, man. For me, um, again, fantastic episode. Realm of the Dukes, Sacred mm-hmm. Boy, summoning and coming together. Very cool. Um, I really want to grind and just no life. Final Fantasy right now is talking to <laughs> Justin. <laughs> I was yep, like, yep. I'm going to force myself to do a little cardio and do something and go out. And then, because right now, all I want to do is go back to Rebirth and yeah. clear every icon and get every material. I already got builds in my head of, of what I want to do with um, Aerith and uh, Red 14, Red 13 right now. So that's where I'm at. But now, fantastic show, man. Loved it. Great. Yeah. Thanks for being on, guys. Appreciate it. And um, yeah, we'll see you all next week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Or listening. We appreciate it. Till next time. Take care. Goodbye. Summon Sign is a product of Last Stand Media and Collins Last Stand LLC and is proudly recorded in the USA. The show is written and hosted by me, Brad Ellis. The show is produced by Dustin Furman. All of Last Stand's theme music is by Ramon Narvaez. Summon Sign, along with the rest of Last Stand's media shows, are fan-funded on Patreon at patreon.com slash laststandmedia. The following names are at the producer level on Patreon, our highest tier, and we are grateful for your kind contribution and generosity to our independent endeavor. Thank you.